Hello, guys and gals, and welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. How's it going, everybody? I took yesterday off because, uh, yeah, you know, the, the, the Fallout uh, series released, and uh, I like Fallout. It's one of my favorite series. And so I had to watch the entire show, and uh, I didn't come up here until I watched the entire show. So um, if you don't want any spoilers for the show, I'll try not to. But it was good. I'll say that. I liked it a lot. I liked it a lot. A lot. I liked it a loot. A loot. Do, 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 do. So what are we going to be doing today? Um, What are we going to be doing today? Well, we're going to be doing something weird. We're going to be uh, continuing our variable testing. Um, so if you guys have not been following the thread of this variable testing stuff, I mean, it's it's interesting. Um, we've been testing a bunch of different things, and uh, we've been coming up with some very odd results. I mean, first off, um, we basically have determined without a shadow of a doubt that uh, Diablo uh, 2 is deterministic. Um, in the way that it does its drops, uh, I don't know if I spelled that correctly, but deterministic is uh, basically means that the drop is kind of decided before you actually click on the body, not once you click on the body. And, th and there's a distinction in that because if you guys have never actually like took some time to think about it, like a, you know, like let's say you kill an MMO boss, right, and, and you go to click on the chest, like is the loot already in the chest and you're just opening the chest to discover what's inside or does the game upon opening the chest generate random values values which automatically you know like turn to a result and it's like okay well the, there's no knowing what's inside the chest before you open it because what's inside the chest hasn't been decided yet essentially Cody's being a butt. Quit it. Um, so basically you have two different schools of thought on things. Like, is the loot generated upon clicking the chest? Or is it the opposite? Is the loot predetermined before clicking the chest. And as it turns out in Diablo 2, it's actually kind of a little bit of a mix of both, but mainly the second one, not the first one. So the loot is not actually generated upon clicking the chest, but a sequence of variables lead to the result, uh, which does mean that the chest is technically, I guess, technically constantly changing its variables until you actually click on it, which means that you could do a bunch of different things. You could teleport around, kill a bunch of monsters, do whatever it is that you want to do, and then when you finally do decide to go click on the chest, yes, the results are basically predetermined from that point. Well, we started to do a lot of additional testing um, with this stuff, and it started to get really interesting, and we started to come up with like some more like crazy things so one of the things that we've always been taught when it comes to Diablo 2 and, and I've even repeated it before um, which is a very simple um, thing of like when you kill a monster you know it decides the like okay so so let me let me uh, start from the beginning um, so we've always been taught that when you kill a monster or you click on a chest or you click on a super chest or whatever, super chests are a little bit different, but um, but for the most part, most of the other stuff is the same. So when you kill a monster, um, they drop an item, right? So drops, item. Um, item uh, ends up being decided by the game somehow in some sort of random fashion, which we basically learned that it's not actually deciding in a random fashion. It's, it's actually deciding in a very deterministic way. But it drops, say, a breastplate. All right, so we get ourselves a nice little breastplate. Um, and then we've always been taught that the game will then roll um, to determine the quality of the item. So, like, the breastplate then drops, and then the quality is then determined afterward. And the quality is determined by your magic find. So your magic find um, then rolls um, your quality, which ends up being something crazy, right? So, like, maybe you end up with... 
Uh, it usually goes, I believe it's unique. Um, I think it's set, rare, magic. I can't remember the exact order right off the top of my head. Um, I'm sure that I'm going to get one or two things out of order. Um, but basically, that's essentially the order that it supposedly rolls in, right? And so, like, if you click on or kill a monster a certain number of times, and even if he drops you, like, a white breastplate, you know, like, 10 times out of 100 or, like, 50 times out of 100, you know, like, sometimes out of those 100, it's going to be a unique one, which would be, what, Venom Ward, right? Um, and sometimes out of those 100, it would be um, Eisenhart's breastplate right so eisenhardt's breastplate uh for this for the set and then sometimes it would just be you know like random rare uh and then sometimes it would be magic right well we started to kind of test this theory that um the magic find is actually rolling the quality of the item um there was some odd things going on in the testing that we were doing and we were coming across basically the same results multiple times. And you might be wondering how we're doing this. So, like, I feel like this is something that we have to go over in advance uh, before we start any of the testing. Because a lot of people get really confused on this and they don't understand how the game works. They don't understand what the hell we're doing or why we're using a specific command to make this stuff happen. And I also get a lot of people making the comment that the seed command that we're using is somehow invalidating the results, which is actually the opposite. So the seed command is actually allowing us to test these results, which is... Anyway, let, let me explain. So whenever you make a game... So let's say you uh, make a game online. Um, the system uses some sort of command. I don't really know exactly how it does it. We'll have to figure that out eventually, too. But essentially, it generates a base seed code. Um, this base seed code determines a lot of things. It determines basically the starting point for just about every drop. It determines the uh, like the map size and all sorts of other things. It's, it's a very important code. Um, and if the code stays the same between games, you start to notice the things that we've been testing. Uh, but the thing is, is that the seed code does not stay the same between games. So it always, always generates a new one for each game. Um, however, if you use the command seed, and then you type in a random seed, it doesn't really matter what you type in. Uh, there's only about 65,000 seeds, by the way, give or take uh, uh, about 100 or so. I can't remember the exact number, but it's somewhere around there. I think it's I think it's like 65,000, like 200 and like 55 or something stupid like that. It's 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 close to 65,000. So there's only about 65,000 total seeds. And what happens is, is since the game is automatically generating a new seed code every single time you go into a new game, this kind of stuff is obfuscated from you. Um, obfuscation is basically where something is, is hidden from you. It's like fog, right? So, like, you can't really see what's going on because, you know, it's the man behind the curtain, like in Wizard of Oz. Um, now, what the seed command does is it locks the seed code to one specific seed code, and it forces the game not to change the seed code. Now, nothing really is different about the way that the game functions, except for the fact that you are now seeing the game basically as it really is, without this fog of war essentially in between you and the game. And by locking your seed code to any seed code, it doesn't matter which one you do, um, any seed code will work, but if you just lock yourself to any specific seed code, you will then run into some very interesting things. And what kind of interesting things will you run into? Well, you'll run into interesting things like being able to find burr runes over and over again and being able to farm a specific chest um, for you know a specific item. You'll even be able to run into situations where you can... Sorry, I had a weird pop-up on my screen over here. You'll even run into situations where you can deliberately uh, force the same stats on an item over and over again, uh, which is something that I've been able to do repeatedly. Um, and I'm going to just show this to you real quick, and it's it's kind of a, an old, outdated trick at this point because I've already done it so much, but uh, let's just go ahead and do it again just for the sake of, uh, of showing off this before we start doing our testing. Um, and as you can see... We get a beautiful burr rune. 
And I'm going to leave that on the dirt because that's where it belongs. And we're going to do this one more time just to really hammer it home. Hopefully I don't mess it up on the second try. I always seem to mess it up on the second try. Now, as you can see, once you lock the seed code to a specific seed, you can basically control the variables to get specific results. And what this has basically taught us, um, with without really going into too much detail here, is it has basically taught us that Diablo 2 is an input-output style deterministic <laughs> loot. Uh, and it sounds kind of complicated, but it's actually really simple. So input means what you do. Output means what you get, right? So your input directly determines the output, which means that you're determining the loot that you will get through the actions that you take. And all of this basically comes down to this base seed code number, which basically means that, for instance, if I change the seed code and I do the same exact actions, which you can change your seed code at any time by going in here and, um, and let me just show you real quick so it's easy. Um, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to change our seed code real quick. And the easiest way to do this is just to open up your uh, Battle.net launcher. Um, in your Diablo 2 Resurrected, go to the options here and then get to game settings. And right here, you're going to put in the seed command. So if I want to change my seed code, uh, which I can do so at any time. So let's just let's just change our seed code. Doesn't really matter. Let's just change it to something completely random. So 6385. And let's hop back in. Now, when you load up the game, basically what's going to happen is, is your seed code is going to change. Um, and as soon as your seed code changes, your map changes, a whole bunch of things change. It's not just one little thing. The seed code is the starting point, essentially, for the entire game. And essentially, how everything is generated in the game, including where the monsters are, what names they are, and everything. But it's only the starting point of it, not actually the... Uh, how would I put it? Like, the end-all, be-all of everything. Um, think about it like um, building a pyramid. Um, you notice how the, the map has completely changed. The super chests aren't here anymore. Like, I could probably go down this way. The super chest might have uh, moved down this way. It's usually pretty common. But as you can see, the map is completely different. Um, so doing the super chest trick is impossible, essentially, because the map has changed. And you might be wondering, like, well, why is it impossible? It'd be just because the map has changed. Well, it's impossible because the way that the game generates its data, the way that it actually does things, is that it's doing it by where you go and what you do. So, like, as you change things, you're changing where you're going to go, right? So the way that the game is actually forcing you to generate new pathways and to find new items is by essentially changing the path that you use to get to the item. Um, in some situations, like for instance with, uh, let's use something really simple, uh, like Pindle Skin. Pindle Skin basically has almost no variation whatsoever. Um, there is no variation in where his portal is um, there's also no variation in where he is, so he's pretty much always in the same exact place, which means that when you farm him, you basically have zero variation whatsoever with the exception of the initial starting seed code. Um, this means that when it comes to Pindle, you could either be in one of two situations. You could end up with all absolutely garbage loot because your seed code could potentially mean that you're never going to get anything good. Um, or you could potentially go in the other direction, which is where you just end up with 
absolutely amazing seed codes and Pendle ends up giving you the most amazing loot in the world and it really only comes down to what that base seed code is and nothing else that you do because there's really no other variables in farming Pendle. Um, and this is one of the reasons why I think a lot of the times when I would farm on my Necromancer versus when I would farm on my Sorceress, I would tend to find more stuff on my Necromancer um, than I would on my Sorceress. And it's really because on my Necromancer, what I would usually do is I would start by going to Pindle, I would gather my army, and then I would start farming random places, like I would farm Frigid Highlands and do Eldritch and Shank, and then I would maybe go down and I would kill Neolithak, and then I would go over there and I would kill the Council, and so forth and so on. And every single time you go to a new location, and every single time you load a new tile, you're adding a new stack onto the top of the pyramid, essentially. So think about it like this. Um, the seed code represents one stack of the pyramid, and every place that you go represents another stack of the pyramid. So stack number two, stack number three, uh, stack number four, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so what happens is, is eventually it gets to the point where you stack up high enough, and uh, because of the way that this system works, is you'll always eventually end up at the same number um, it might sound kind of silly, but it, it's it's something to do with the way that this system actually stacks its numbers. It's an old, uh, I believe it's C plus system, and um, essentially each variable that you add stacks up onto the other, which eventually adds up to a uh, what's it called? Um, it's called a I think it's a uniform variable or something like that it's basically where the variables always inevitably end up in the same exact number no matter what so the more variables you add essentially the more likely you are to reach the uniform variable which is where something potentially can happen across the board on just about any map or any seed that you're in so it doesn't matter what the starting seed is because you'll always end up at the same C, you'll always end up at the same variable eventually, depending on the number of variables that you stack. So it gets it gets a little complicated, but honestly, it's not as complicated as it seems. How do you add variables? Um, well, the easiest way to add variables is just simply to go to a waypoint. Um, what we've noticed is that tiles, or rather like loading a potential uh, chunk, if, if Minecraft makes more sense to you guys, so tiles, chunks, whatever you want to call it. This tile represents a variable. So it changes the way that things work. And um, so we started testing things like, okay, well, which variables lead to which results, right? So it's, it's something that you can very easily test with, like, the super chests and whatnot. So if I go back to um, Act 3, and we try to keep the variables as tight as possible, so that we don't have any cross-contamination from other variables or other things that are going on. And a lot of this means that you end up doing the same action over and over again to really kind of like show what's going on. And one of the things I can show you is that if you go directly to Lower Kuros, um with, let's see, I need to, I need to do a quick reboot real quick. I can show it with uh, with any seed code, but it's easier to show it with the uh, previous seed code because there's a super chest right by the waypoint. Um, and the reason why you want something that's right by the waypoint is because, well, each tile that you load on the way to the destination adds another variable stack. And um, the further away from the seed code's initial variable stack you get, the harder it is to control the variables um, in a meaningful way, which means you end up with, I would call it inaccurate scientific testing. Um, what we're trying to do is make sure that it's accurate scientific testing, not inaccurate. All right, so we go to Lower Karas, and I'm going to teleport to the Super Chest. If I go directly to it and I don't go to any other variable stack, it's going to drop me a Dirk and a Double Axe. I need a key. Um, and, of course, I don't have a key. Boop. And we get a Dirk and a Double Axe. And I know this because I can repeat this over and over and over again. So as long as you're in the same seed code, you go back to the same chest the same way, and every time you go back to the same chest the same way, you will get the same result, which is a Dirk and a Double Axe. And, um, and we test this by essentially repeating it. So it's not really too difficult. You basically just go straight back to Lord Kuros, you teleport right back to the chest, and you get a Dirk and a Double Axe again. So no change in essentially the drops because we didn't change how we approached this chest. And what I mean by how we approached it is not the direction we approached it from or the time that we approached it from because we also tested to see if time was a variable. Time being a variable was something that we had originally considered 
and it doesn't seem like time is a variable despite the fact that many people seem to have decided that it was. And I can demonstrate this very clearly by just simply running around in circles and showing you guys that time is not a variable. So we're going to wait. And you can obviously see that time has changed. We're obviously taking much longer than we were before. We're running around. And then we're going to teleport back here and it's still going to be a Dirk and a Double Axe. Because the time that it took to get us here wasn't a variable. It's not that. It's also not the amount of movement that you make either. Um, as you can see, I was running around in circles here, and despite the fact that I was running around in circles, nothing changed. Now, what we did decide, eventually figured out was that super chests essentially get their drop table, or their, their, their actual drop, whatever the drop is, by how many variables you've stacked before you go to the chest. So in this particular case, if I go to Spider Forest first, and then I go back to Lower Kurost, I've now stacked a variable on top of the original variable. And this means that the chest will no longer drop me the Dirk and the Double Axe, and instead drops me the Lockabar and the Double Bow. All right? And I can repeat this every single time just by simply doing the same actions. So in this way, we've been able to basically directly manipulate what falls from the chest and how many variables you stack seems to be important as well because if you don't stack a certain number of variables you don't get the result that you want um, in the case of spider forest spider forest seems to flip and flop back and forth between durance of hate which is also really interesting so you notice i got a harpoon and a kite shield that time uh, the harpoon and the kite shield for some reason flips back and forth between durance of hate and spider forest I probably would have been better off using a different waypoint, but let's go to Durance of Hate, and let's see what Durance of Hate gives us. Um, and this seems to have something to do with the variables being related to each other in some way, which I know sounds kind of silly, but uh, it definitely seems like certain variables, like you can see the Durance of Hate one also gave me the Harpoon and the Kite Shield. Um, and this is something weird that I've noticed as I've been doing the testing, is that Durance of Hate and Spider Forest seem to be the same variable which is also very interesting. But then at the same time, Spider Forest is sometimes not the same variable as Durance of Hate. It flips and flops back and forth between whether it wants to be or not. And I haven't really pinned down exactly why that is. Now then the thing is, is that we discovered more. So you already know that the chest drops a Dirk and a Double Axe in P7, right? We're in Player 7 right now. And that's exactly what it drops every single time. Um, but we started to dive even deeper than that, which is basically where we figured out that um, despite the fact that it drops a Turk and a Double Axe in P7 and with the correct variables, um, we did discover that if you change the variables um, of the player count but did not change any of the other variables, you would get a different result. And this is where we discovered that the chests were actually dropping a different set of loot for each individual player count. Um, there's basically four brackets of super chest drops. And the four brackets of super chest drops are different uh, for each two tiers of the player count. Um, and basically what we discovered with the two tiers of the player count was essentially this. Um, players one and two were linked together for one set of drops uh, players 3 and 4 were linked together uh, for the second set of drops. Players four and f first 5 and 6 uh, were also linked together for a another set of drops. Um, and then finally, um, P8, sorry, 7 and 8 were linked together. Um, and what do I mean by linked together? Well, it, what I mean by linked together is that they literally give the same drops um, as each other. So 7 and 8 will give the same drops as each other. 5 and 6 give the same drops as each other. 3 and 4 give the same drops as each other. And 2 and 1. However, they do not give the same drops as any of the others. So 1 and 2 will never give the same drops as P7 and P8. And this is really interesting because one of the things that we determined by this was essentially that player count directly affects what comes out of the chests. 
Um, and it's a lot more than we thought. Uh, I couldn't get any of the drops to duplicate themselves in the varying player counts. Um, for instance, if I do the burr rune trick to try and get the burr rune to fall from the chest in, say, uh, players three, which we could do that right now, uh, the super chest won't drop the burr rune in players three. It drops something else entirely. Um, and even though we've got all the variables the same, even though we keep doing everything right, the super chest won't drop the same things the same way. And um, super chests are special within the game too, which is interesting because they don't behave the same way as other objects do. And what do I mean by behave the way the same the same way that other objects do? Well, we all we've always been taught that super chests uh, are not affected by magic find, right? So so magic find doesn't affect super chests. Um, and you can test this pretty simply by just adding tons of magic find, right? So I've got a whole bunch of magic find charms in here, and this is going to be part of the testing that we're doing today, which is basically just adding huge amounts of magic find to see if things change. And we already know that magic find doesn't affect super chests. So that's not really something that we need to test, but we can test it all the same. And um, what I can do is I can just simply add on a massive amount of magic find, more than any you know regular player would generally have, and then open the chest uh, a certain number of times and see if anything changes. Now, Super chests have their own built-in percent chance of basically getting what I would call um, a up roll. I think up roll is probably the best way to state it. Um, and it's not really affected by magic find, but adding in a huge amount of magic find, according to the way that we think the game works, um, should technically give us you know, rare items, right? So when you when you click on anything or when you when you kill a monster or whatever it may be, with the exception of super chests, you should have a huge benefit of adding magic find to your character. So the more magic find you have, the better the chances of getting the item, right? Well it didn't seem to be the case. Um, we started to do some testing on that too and uh, and we'll have to go over the magic find testing itself. But just for the sake of argument, let's go um, click on the chest real quick, the super chest. And uh, with our, our huge amounts of magic find, I think we're like over, uh, what are we at right now? 1,339%. Uh, uh, most characters never get up to 1,339%, so I feel like that's plenty. Um, and what you'll find is that pretty much no matter how many times we do this, it's going to be a Dirk and a Double Axe pretty much every time. Um, and the other thing is is that with Super Chests, if one rolls rare, they all roll rare because that's how the Super Chests work. So if they roll rare, they're all rare. If they roll set, they're all set. If they roll unique, they're all unique, uh, with the exception of items that cannot roll unique. So the only time you'll ever see something hinky is like, say, for instance, you got a unique roll but an Archon Plate dropped. Well, the Archon Plate can't be a unique because there is no unique Archon Plate, in which case it would roll as a rare Archon Plate, and it would give you the idea that a rare item and a unique item dropped at the same time, but really you just had a failed roll. Now, Magic Find may not affect Super Chests, but Magic Find should affect other things, like Clickables. Uh, clickables, for instance, is something that is affected by Magic Find. So we started to test clickables and to see if Magic Find affected clickables and how they worked. Uh, because it's very simple to test this one. The skeleton is literally right by the waypoint. Um, so the first thing we did to test out this skeleton is we went to the skeleton directly. And you just click on him and you see what he drops. So he drops the scroll, pound portal, super mana potion, and, and gold. Magic Find can't do anything with that, right? So that's not helpful. So we keep running this test until we find a drop table, essentially, that the skeleton will give us the items that we want, which we were able to determine that how the skeleton drops items is actually different than how the super chest drops items, which is kind of neat. Um, let me uh, outline this a little bit so that it makes sense. Um, so the super chest 
Um, basically, it has two variables from what we can tell. There's only two. Uh, the two variables are, or, uh, well, we have to say three because player count does does come into effect with Super Chest as well. So three variables. Um, you've got your P count. Uh, that's variable number one. Then you have tiles loaded, which seems to be variable number two. Um, and then finally, it's item count, all stashes, slash inventories. Um, it's actually everything from what we were able to see, including your belt, your Herodra cube, your stash, your shared stash, um, all of it. Um, tiles loaded directly decided what fell. Um, chest or P count basically directly decided um, it seems to be the actual loot table. Um, so the table that's actually being pulled from. So in this particular case, let's say uh, the what fell means that we're pulling from, I don't know, entry number five on a loot table, right? Well, if entry number five is the same no matter what because we've got the same variables leading up to the chest, it seems like the player's count seems to directly determine um, the loot table, which means that entry number five may not be the same on the loot table in the different player count, if that makes sense. Um, and this is this is different than the way that clickables work. So we were testing out clickables, and clickables um, had a different set of rules. So tile loading um, does have a effect that is at number one. Um, item count. Instead of affecting the stats on the item, which is what the item count does for the super chests, uh, which we, we can actually put here, uh, determines stats, uh, which I can actually show you this uh, really quickly so that you guys don't you know doubt me here. Hold on. Let's, let's actually show you that item count actually determines stats. Hey, what's up, Prowl? All right, so to show you that item count determines stats, all I have to do is go to the chest and open up the chest and I pick up the dirk and we're going to identify the dirk. The dirk is going to be a fine dirk of the lamprey. All right, so we're going to drop that dirk on the ground. I'm going to keep my item count the same. Um, and by keeping my item count the same, I'm going to come back to the chest and I'm going to open it again and there's going to be another fine dirk of the lamprey. Um, this is essentially a trick that can only be used essentially for the super chests. Um, at first I thought it was for everything and that was my mistake uh, because in my testing I later come to find out that this is only for super chests. So notice I have the fine dirk of the lamprey. However, if I take this dirk and I keep it, all right, so I'm going to keep it this time. I'm not going to throw it away. I've now added one to my total item count and by adding one to my total item count, I've changed the stats on the Dirk. So the next Dirk is not going to be the fine Dirk of the Lamprey. It's going to be something else because I changed the number of items of my inventory. And in this way, that's the way that the game essentially determines the stats that are going to be on the items that come from the super chest. Um, notice now I have the smoking Dirk of Butchery. Um, it's actually kind of sweet. 39 max damage and 124 fire. <laughs> now I can get this one again if I want to so uh, if I want to get that one again I can just simply keep my my number the same um, and it's also important to note that the stats on the item don't seem to matter the quality of the item doesn't seem to matter um, in fact we also tested to see if runes inside of rune words matter um, and uh, yes they do um, and it's really quite interesting what counts because basically just about everything counts as one item um, no matter what the size of it is or anything. Um, and to show you that it doesn't matter what item you have in your inventory, we can just simply take this item and throw it away and replace it with this item. Now we have th the Smoking Dirk of Butchery instead of the Fine Dirk of Lamprey, and even though we've changed it to a different item, in fact, we can even, we can even go further than this. So instead of changing it to uh, the Smoking Dirk, let's pick up the Double Axe. So the double axe is basically uh, still counts as one item, even though it's not a dirk. So let's go ahead and, and grab 
One more item. Alright, so now we grab our Dirk. And we're going to identify it real quick. And notice we still have our smoking Dirk of Butchery. Because the stats on the item didn't change. Because the number of items in my inventory stayed static. And that's really all that matters. Is the number of the items in my inventory stayed static, right? And that made sure that the stats on the item stayed the same. So that was Super Chests, though. Right? So Super Chests has their own things. Clickables seem to be affected by tile loading. So what do I mean by tile loading? Well, this is a clickable right here, and we're going to use this for our testing. So we're going we're gonna to go even further and even deeper down the rabbit hole if you guys are willing to join me. Um, and as we go forward, I'm going to be testing new things as well. So I'm trying to impart on you guys all of my existing knowledge, and then at the same time, I'm also going to be working out ways to test out new things during this stream as well. So... Uh, it should be fun. So first off, we're going to go straight to Lower Kurost, and we're just going to teleport straight to the skeleton, and he's going to give us junk. Nothing nothing worthy of testing there. I mean, that was a super mana potion, a scroll of town portal, and a little pile of gold. Nothing nothing really all that great. All right, so let's try a couple different variables. So first off, let's just try adding one variable to the mix. So let's go to Travancall first, and then let's go to Lower Kurost. And now the skeleton drops us a ghost wand. Uh, a ghost wand is a fairly nice wand that does actually have a unique base, I believe. Um, the unique for the ghost wand is... Oh, it doesn't have a unique for the ghost wand. Okay. All right, so we can't use this one because there is no unique. So let's, um, let's try a different set of variables. Um, do we know if having more items means better affixes or that it just changes the item? Uh, from what I've been able to tell, um, and this is due to a significant amount of testing in checking charms, which we actually checked a large number of charms, um, as you can see by all these small charms that I have in my inventory. What it seemed like to me is it was more like hitting the lottery with the correct number of items. Um, if I can make myself clear um let's pretend that i don't know let, let's pretend that you had 255 entries for potential drops of the stats on this particular item it's probably more than that but let's just pretend you have 255 entries all right and let's pretend that i don't know 245 of these entries are what what we would consider junk entries things like plus one strength things like plus one percent magic find um you know things like two to four fire damage or 15 poison damage like the junk entries seem to consume the majority of the ticks on the list and from what i've been able to tell is there does seem to be good entries on the list, they're just few and far between. And when you do encounter those good entries, like for instance the Sapphire Small Charm of Balance, which is actually a pretty decent charm, you can repeat those entries over and over again just by keeping the same number of items in your inventory. But it does take a considerable amount of effort to go through every single variable, changing the number of items you have in your inventory, and essentially searching through all of these junk entries to essentially find the one, you know, decent entry. Um, and what this could potentially mean, and this, is, and this is kind of silly, is it could potentially mean that keeping the number of items in your inventory the same constantly could potentially mean you always end up with junk. But uh, a very interesting takeaway from this is, is that as a person who tends to hoard, uh, let's, call, let's call these um, hoarders, um, hoarders probably have better luck getting good charms and good stats on items from super chests specifically because of this because they're constantly adjusting and changing the number of items in their inventory which means that they're constantly getting different stat rolls 
than a person who's not picking up items. Um, so it, it, you know, it's not necessarily guaranteed, but the guy that's changing his variables more probably has a better chance of getting stuff than the guy who's not. So the guy who's staying static with the same number of items in his inventory, who avoids picking up anything at all, really, and, like, always goes with a loaded full belt and of potions and always has the same number of items in his inventory, like, always has his entire inventory filled with charms and, like, you know, like a specific number of items in his cube and whatever. Like, if his inventory and his everything that he has is pretty much always static there's a very good chance that you're just going to be getting the same junk entries repeatedly forever versus the guy that's picking up stuff and hoarding it. He's going to be constantly changing his entries on a regular basis. And is it for the better? No, we don't know. But he is actually changing the number of items he has in his inventory. And because he's changing the number of items he has in his inventory, he's more likely to get hitting those uh, what I would call lottery entries. So the lottery entries seem to be entries specifically set up by the game to basically give you something good. Um, now, this is just super chests, though. So let, let's keep going from here. So we need to keep going and, and testing out things like clickables and monsters and and various other things right so let's let's see if we can keep uh playing around with this so one of the things that, that i wanted to test was clickables to see how clickables were potentially different from super chests and um using this skeleton i was able to eventually get um, various rolls right so various items were falling from the super chest now, interestingly enough, I was able to determine that the clickables were actually also using the number of items in your inventory variable, which was interesting, but not the same way that the super chests were using the number of items in your inventory variable. Um, and I'll demonstrate. So first off, um, we have our super mana potion and our scroll of town portal. We went directly to it. So I'm going to pick up this one potion here, um, and we're going to exit and come back. And let's see if the variables change at all. So we're going to try and make sure we keep everything the same. We're going to go straight there, teleport straight to the skeleton, and we're going to see if it still gives us the Super Mana Potion, the Scroll of Town Portal, and the Little Pop Gold. So notice this time, because we picked up an item, the drops that came from the container... Let's just call these containers, because all the containers seem to be the same. Urns, baskets, skeletons, chests. Not super chests, but chests. Um, they all seem to be the same in this regard, and they seem to use the number of items in your inventory. So let's pick up this ring, and by picking up the ring, we're going to change the number of items in our inventory again, and uh, we're going to change the potential result. All right, so now we have a short spear, a low quality war hat, um, scroll town portal, and gold. Right, so we've got we've got something that's staying the same. Right. Well, let's try that again just to make sure that the variable stays the same. So we still get the war hat, we still get the short war spear. Let's let's see. Oops, I actually went to nightmare. It doesn't matter because as long as you have your seed code entered, it doesn't uh, it doesn't change. Whoop. Trying to keep all the variables as limited as possible because the smaller the variables, the better here. Um, you don't want to you don't want to add in any unnecessary variables into the equation. Uh, not when you're doing testing. Later on, when we start like messing around with the stuff online and playing around with the different variables in the online setting, it'll be after we've already discovered all this stuff. All right, so as you can see, same thing. Short war spear, low quality war hat, etc. Right? So in this particular example, I have a huge amount of magic find, right? So what we've always been taught from like as far back as I could remember 
is that the game rolls the quality, right? So, so the game is determining what drops, and we've always been told that you can't change what falls, right? That, that the game is determining what falls, and you can't determine what falls, right? So the base has to drop first. So right now we have a war hat. Well, the war hat can potentially be a bunch of things. It can potentially be a peasant crown. It could be a rare war hat. Uh, it can't be the set war hat because that one only drops in the cow level, but it could potentially roll as a set, and then it could roll back as a rare with double durability, right? So there's a bunch of different things that you could potentially get out of a war hat um, with a large amount of magic find. Well, one of the things that I wanted to test was, well, okay, if I add a large amount of magic find, and then I find something like this that has a low-quality war hat, a short war spear, whatever, right? If I run that enough times with a huge amount of magic find, right? Now, we, we know from the chart, and this is the chart that we've all been shown a trillion times. I've showed it on the stream before. Um, that essentially Magic Find has diminishing returns, but also that blue items are supposedly not part of the diminishing returns. So this is also very important, is that according to the way that the calculations work, is that despite the fact that uniques are affected by diminishing returns, Despite the fact that sets and rares are affected by diminishing returns, set uh, magic items, however, go up directly with the amount of magic find that you have. So the more magic find you have, the better the chances are, supposedly, that you will get a magic item, right? Well, in this particular case, I'm running a huge amount of magic find. I've got 1,000, what, 300% magic find, right? And we've got a low-quality war hat, which is currently dropping from this corpse, right? The low-quality war hat is obviously a white base. So if our magic find is working, then the low quality war hat should, with very little effort, turn into a blue, right? So we should see it turn into a blue. And this was part of my testing that I wanted to find out. I wanted to find out if the magic find that you were getting and the percentage was actually causing the item to roll or whether the item was decided as a quality before it dropped by some sort of other equation. In other words, is the magic find actually providing a, a role which is changing the item based on, you know, like a percentage-based chance like we thought it was? Or is it something else entirely, right? And to test this, I basically just kept doing this over and over again. And it was really boring. Um, and no matter how many times I did it, the problem is is that well the item never changed it it never changed from white it was always a white item um it never changed from the low quality war hat the low quality war hat kept spawning with the same exact stats um same exact durability like everything was exactly the same every single time and i couldn't figure out how to change it um, magic find didn't seem to have any effects. Adding more magic find or taking magic find away didn't have any specific effect until I took away enough magic find that I dropped below a certain threshold and I thought maybe it was like maybe there were breakpoints in magic find, which I quickly uh, dismissed because it does not seem like there are breakpoints in magic find. However, I did come across something very interesting, which was. Magic find was determining the quality of the item that was falling, but not with a random chance. Now, this was probably the weirdest thing that I had discovered yet, is that essentially the magic find wasn't actually causing the item to roll, but that the magic find percentage, specifically the percentage, was changing the drop depending on the percentage that I had, which was really weird. That was where things got really hinky, and I started to kind of... I'm going into, like, hoodoo-voodoo territory here, and you might be wondering what the hell I'm talking about. All right, so so first off, let's just take these um, these Magic Find Charms out of my inventory, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if I can show you and explain this. So we're getting the low-quality war hat to drop every single time, right? So I'm going to take all these Magic Find Charms out of my inventory. Um, we're going to go ahead and take them all out. And I'm gonna only going to put one this time. 
All right. We're just going to have, uh, what is it, 155% magic find? Oh, we got 254%. So we've got uh, another magic find in here. What are we running? We've got the 99% from Enigma. Um, well, it's fine. Okay. Let's, just, let's just test it with 254. All right, so we go directly here. We click on this. And notice, dropping my magic find percentage, not only did it change the result, but it also changed the items that dropped. So in this particular case, you notice that I went down from that huge percentage of magic find, which was the, what, what, 1,300 some odd crazy percent, right? And, and, and I changed it down to, you know, a measly 254, right? Well, when I clicked on the corpse this time, instead of getting a low quality war hat and a blue damage short spear, I get a damage short spear and no low quality war hat. Right, And it was really strange to me because changing the percentage of magic find for some reason also changed what fell. And this started to get me into a really weird place, which is, okay, well, if the percentage of magic find isn't important, like how much you have, stacking it to the moon and back isn't important, then what is? Like, what is it about Magic Find that's actually giving you these good drops? Because obviously Magic Find works. I mean, people have used Magic Find in Diablo 2 for a very long period of time. And you can't say that Magic Find doesn't work unless it's just the biggest placebo effect ever because it does have an effect. I'm even showing you right now that adding and taking away Magic Find does actually change the drop directly. But it's not a roll. It's not giving you a better drop or a worse drop depending on, like some sort of random probability chance or increasing the the odds of getting like a rare or you know a different quality item changing the magic find percentage directly seems to manipulate some sort of loot table in the background and it seems to be based on individual percentages not a total amount in fact adding more over a certain percentage seemed to make it worse not better um, and for this reason, let me pull up some of my testing from before. Um, and uh, this is on my current testing that we were doing. And we were basically playing around with a bunch of different percentages. Uh, at first, we started with some big percentages. Then we started to go into like smaller percentages, like 10% percentages. And then it got to the point where we started to figure out that it wasn't even just like 10% percentages. It was individual percents that literally at specific percentages, there were rare drops that would happen. And I would literally sit here and I would go, okay, 280, crap, 281, crap, 282, crap, 283, crap, 284, crap. And then all of a sudden, 285, rare. 286, rare. Then back to crap, 287, crap, 288, crap, 289, crap, etc. And it would continue on this trend where specific percentages of magic find actually would give better items than other percentages of magic find. And I believe I can demonstrate this exact thing here because I do have my um, original path. So it looks like I was doing players eight. So let's go ahead and pull up players eight. Uh, boop, boop. Um, and then we need to replicate our magic find percentage. So, for instance, our magic find percentage for this one was 285% to get a rare man catcher. And let's go ahead and duplicate this. So we're currently at 409. Let's go ahead and take one of these 255s out. Uh, that brings us to 254. So we need to add 254... To 64, 274, 284, and we need what? 285, right? So we need a one percenter. Um, and that should bring us directly to 285%. All right. So now we replicate the previous results. So let's see if we can replicate my previous results. Um, now, if I remember correctly, the number of items in my inventory 
Um, I can't remember if it was the right number. So we'll probably have to drop the ring and the potion. Otherwise, the number of items of my inventory will have changed. But let's we'll, we'll just check it real quick and we'll see. We might have to fiddle around with the number of items in my inventory. All right, so that's not it. Let's go ahead and pick up one ring. I may have thrown something away, or we'll, we'll have to we'll have to mess with it a little bit. Uh, the number of items in the inventory plus the variables makes the clickables a little bit more random, just simply because there's a lot more going on. Uh, Flare jungle or Kurost. We've got okay. I'm not really sure if I... Did I pick up too many items? Do I still have that stupid... Uh, I don't still have the Derek in my inventory. Okay. Let's try throwing a couple items away. So let's just pull three items out, and then we'll pick up some items as we go, and we'll see if we can get to the same number. We can always do it again, though. So we can just test it again. We can just come up with a new set of variables, and we can just play around with it until we find the, the percentages. And it'd be interesting to test it out on various things. Another thing that I want to test the magic find out on is monsters specifically, but we're gonna to have to find we're gonna to have to find a specific monster. I went to the wrong place. We're gonna to have to find a specific monster that I can kill repeatedly without too much trouble. Um, I'm not exactly sure how we're gonna be able to do that, but we're gonna to have to figure it out. Pindle maybe, but uh, Pindle's a little bit iffy. All right, so flare jungle first, and then lower crust. We got mana potion, so let's pick up one mana potion so we can add one to the variable list. I don't think it's a lot of variables. I think it's the same variables used multiple times for multiple different things, if that makes sense. Uh, we got a ring. And it could be fun to play around with that ring and see if we could get like a unique ring to pop out. I mean, we have a variable stack. I mean, that's a that's a variable right there. But um, well, let's go ahead and pick up the ring. Um, and let's see if we can get the man catcher again. Uh, Silva, I think one of the main issues with that is I think for a long time people have just kind of like fallen into this false narrative of um, I'm, I'm not really quite sure how to put how to word a false narrative. Um, they, they've fallen into this idea that Diablo 2 is like all other games in that it has a random number generator in the background doing the work. And the truth is, is that there is no random number generator in the background doing the work. All right, so we've now um, hit the correct number of variables. So the correct number of variables is apparently three. Um, and we threw away that ring. So we, we, if, as long as we keep it the same, we'll get the same result, right? Okay, so we have the rare man catcher, right? So the rare man catcher has fallen. And this was something that was really interesting because we started to test this and we started to find out that the rare man catcher only drops at specific percentages. And you might be wondering what the hell I'm talking about, right? So I can reproduce the rare man catcher over and over and over again by staying at this exact percentage of magic find. And this is weird to me. Uh, because I never thought that the exact percentage of magic find would have anything to do with it. I always thought it was more like a, I don't know, like having better odds at a casino, right? Like, I don't know, like maybe you get to roll with three dice instead of getting to roll with two dice or something. But that's not the case. The case isn't that you get to roll with three dice. The case is apparently that each percentage of magic find changes things, right? So how do I prove this to you guys? Well, let's let's just prove it, right? So the first thing we got to do is just take some magic find away. And 1% magic find is enough to cause this to fail, right? So if we lose 1% magic find and we drop below the 285% mark to the 284% mark, we will get crap again. 
Um, and it's it's just as simple as that. 1% magic find is enough to change the result back to garbage. Now, granted, a lot of you would probably say that the rare man catcher is also garbage. So that's also, you know, you're right. It is. Um, and as you can see how now, now we get a cracked man catcher instead of a rare man catcher. Um, and this is an, in accordance to my findings, which is really freaking weird, right? It, it's almost as if the percentage of magic find that you have, like how much you have, and this is something that we've been taught for a long time too, is that the more magic find you have, the better it is, right? So like, the more, the better, and you know, get 10,000% magic find and you'll, and you'll, you know, you'll get, uh, you'll get what you want, like all your dreams will come true, but it doesn't seem to be the case. Um, upon testing, it doesn't seem like and this is something that I think we should probably write down here, it doesn't seem like that the quantity of MF does anything really at all. Um, and I know people are going to fight me on this, but the testing doesn't seem to prove that more magic find is better. Um, it only really seems to prove that uh, and instead, it seems to prove that the exact percentage of MF directly causes the quality to increase. Um, and this is weird because it has to be an exact percentage. Um, and what are the exact percentages? Well, as we tested, we started to find exact percentages at like 286. There was like a 285. Uh, we also found one at 255 and so forth and so on. And we started to find like changes like in what dropped. Like the first change happened at 175% and so forth and so on. And then it went back to crap at like 185. And we started to test all sorts of different numbers. Um, even going as low as going to like 1%. And, and then going up to, you know, two and then three and then four and then testing like every single percentage. Like as if there were specific percentages that just had better chances of getting items than others. Now one thing that I did notice is that almost like a key, as you went up in Magic Find, the number of... In, uh, of rare man catchers, essentially, in this particular example. The number of rare man catchers in this example started to increase, right? And they were closer together. This was, this was something that was actually rather interesting. Think about it like this. Um, at 1% or like 1% to 50%, there might be like one entry between 1% to 50%. Between 50 and 100%, there might be like two. Between like... Two, like 100, and, 100 to 200, there might be like three entries. It seemed like the higher magic find you went, the more entries there were to potentially give you a quality upgrade, but also at the same time that there were still a lot of crap entries all the way around them in circles, right? So like as you can see here, even up to 285%, we've got two rare man catchers right next to each other, but then crap like surrounding them on all sides, right? So it doesn't really matter that you had the two rare here because if you didn't hit this exact amount, you're still hitting these terrible numbers. Um, and this made me kind of think that maybe it wasn't actually... Um, I'm not really quite sure how to put this. Um, I mean, I'm sure you guys have all seen a slot machine, right? Um, let's let's use a slot machine as an example. Um, so when you look at a slot machine and you and you look at how the slot works, right? The slot machine is a wheel. So you know, like uh, we don't we don't really see it, but in the background behind the slot, you know, behind the slot machine, it's just a wheel that's spinning around in a circle, right? And on this wheel is the the winning entries. So it made me think that perhaps what's actually happening behind the background that we're not seeing is that it's actually just a wheel of entries um, starting at 1%, right? And, and you, could, you could potentially write this out, right? So you could, um, I could just pull up a notepad. Um, 
Well, that's that's the question, Silva. So does the wheel repeat? And if it is a wheel, then is it just repeating over and over and over again down the list? So like if you have 1% um, all the way down to 2, so you just go down the list all the way down this list, at what point is it just repeating, right? So is it just, you know, like crap? Are we just looking at something like this, which is crap, 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 right? And then let's say seven is a win, right? So the game is basically saying, okay, well, if you've got 7% magic fine, that's a win. And then at that point, it, are we looking at a system that's just repeating itself? So if it is like a, a slot machine, is, is it just doing this over and over again? At which point, like how much magic find is actually the correct percentage of magic find? Well, the answer is you don't know. Because if, if on the wheel, it basically has all these failures, right? So every single failure is on the wheel. And then there's like occasionally a win here or there on the wheel that does repeat itself every now and then. And then as you increase your magic find, so as you go to like 10%, well, that's not enough, right? Seven would have been fine because that would have been a win. But you went to ten, and ten isn't a win. But if it cycles itself back around, then we're looking at 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So now 17 is a win. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all the way down the list. And this is something that I've kind of been thinking about, and it's, there are ways that we could potentially test it. So um, also, Silva, in, in regards to your statement, let me um, kind of temper the number of potential entries, right? So we don't necessarily know how many entries there are. However, we do know that the system is a lot less complicated than any of the modern systems. So like the number of seed codes, for, for instance, a lot of people are under the assumption that the number of seed codes is in the bazillions, right? I'll talk to people about this sometimes, and the first thing that they're going to say is they're going to be like, well, there's no way that you could accidentally get the same seed code as somebody else, and there's no way you could potentially map out all the seed codes because there's, there's, there's a kajabillion, gazillion, gadillion, medillion seed codes, right? So there's no way that you could ever do that. Well, if this was a modern game, yeah. If it was a modern game, there would be a kabillion, gajillion, bazillion seed codes, right? But this is not a modern game. This is a game from the year 2000. The number of seed codes that we currently have access to is only 65,000 some odd. Um, and that's the, that's the seed codes that actually start the game. It's like 65,000, I think it's like 255. Which, comparatively to a game that has like a bajillion different seed codes, 65,000 is a relatively minute amount. Um, and... Keeping this in mind, when we think about this wheel and how big this wheel could potentially be and how many potential options could be on this wheel, it might not be as big as you think. It might only be like 255 options or it might be a thousand options. We're not exactly sure. I mean, I still, I still need to test a lot of stuff to get a good idea out of this. And it, and it involves a lot of really boring testing. You guys might be wondering what the hell I'm talking about. Like, what what kind of boring testing are we talking about? Well, let me let me give you guys an example. All right, so let me take all my magic find off. We're gonna take uh, every bit of magic find that I have off, and what we're gonna do is uh, let's make sure I've got zero percent magic find. Okay, um, and we're gonna put a one percent magic find charm in my inventory. All right. So we're currently at 1% magic find. So to, to actually test this and figure this out, whether or not the magic find percentages exist in a, a loop, you would have to sit here uh, and essentially do this over and over and over again. You would have to go and go to the same thing, same clickable, over and over and over again with your different percentages of magic find. So for instance, in this case, we're gonna we're gonna go, we got our we got our one percent magic find, we're gonna click on this, we got our two eighteen, our crack men catcher, and our antidote potion. So this is this is just gonna be a, a contest of of wills essentially to just go through every percentage and look and see how many crap rolls we get and how many good rolls we get and how many times anything changed at all, to be honest with you. Because 
a lot of the times nothing will change at all. So even when you change your magic find percentage, even if it's just like 1% or 10% or 100%, like a lot of the times you'll get no reaction whatsoever, right? So like you literally have to do this with almost every single percentage point to really kind of understand what the hell is going on. And, and I played around with this for a while. Um, and there was something weird that happened when I started playing around with this for a while. It was a thing that happened that actually kind of made me have a little bit of hope for there potentially actually being some sort of random number generator system involved. Um, and this is in my notes from before. So you'll notice that down here at 290% magic find, I got a 405 gold crude man catcher. And you might be wondering, how is that different than what I've been getting? Well, it's really weird to say this because it's such an odd and small change, but notice it says a cracked man catcher, and this one is a crude man catcher. The amount of gold that was dropping was 218, and the amount of gold that dropped on this one is 405, and so it was a change. It wasn't necessarily the most amazing change in the world, but it was a change. Um, and then I tried to reproduce it, but I could not. <coughs> So I thought it was maybe just an anomaly and that perhaps, you know, there was just something wrong, right? Maybe I had messed up somewhere, clicked on something the wrong way, um, walked a little bit too far to the left or the right or something. It's just, just messed up the variables in some way. But it started to happen at random percentages throughout the list, so it wasn't something that was tied to the number of items in my inventory. It wasn't something that was tied to the variables um, of, for instance, the um, like the the chunks that you're loading before you get there. It was something that was separate from those, and I couldn't figure out what it was. And I still I still honestly don't know exactly what causes the random manifestation of the 405 gold crude man catcher anomaly. Um, it happens very rarely. In fact, you might not even see it in this stream because it took me several hundreds of attempts to get this to happen. And then when it happened, um, I could not get it to happen again until like several hundreds of attempts later, right? Um, and, and this is interesting. Um, it's I don't I don't know exactly what it means, but it's interesting. Now, from a certain standpoint, if we look at the super chest, the super chest seems to have three variables that we know of. It has the players count as one variable. It has the tiles loaded as variable number two, and then it has the item count determining the stats on the item as variable number three. Um, if we look at the clickables, the clickables have item count as variable number one, tile loading as variable number two. And as far as we're aware, magic find as variable number three, right? So we have three variables again. So if there is some sort of fourth variable involved that is changing randomly what's going on with the clickables, I can't really figure out what that fourth variable is. And I don't think there is a fourth variable. Um, because none of the other things have fourth variables either. They all seem to be limited to three variables determining what's going on. So with the super chests, you have three variables, and with the clickables, you also have three variables. Um, let's, let's play around with this a little bit more, shall we? So changing the amount of charms in your inventory doesn't do anything because all sources are cumulated total. Um, I'm pretty sure I said this earlier, but let me go over it again just to be sure. And I can I can show you this, and I can literally make it, I can hammer it home, all right? So if you have an item in your inventory, or if you have an item in your stash, or your shared stash, or your cube, um, or even your mercenary, believe it or not, all items are totaled. So it is a total of all items. Uh, we even tested things like alternate weapons um, within your alternate weapon slots, um, as well as um, items on the ground even, um, we're also counting. So if you dropped an item on the ground, the item on the ground was actually also counting. 
Um, and I can show you this really easily. So we can we can test this and I can show you the variables. Uh, it doesn't really take very much effort. So for instance, we know that we have to have a certain number of items in our inventory to be able to affect the man catcher, right? So if I go to the item or the, the, the particular body, you'll see that the body will drop me the man catcher. Now uh, let's let's just go test this real quick, and uh, we can we can get this out of the way. All right, so flare jungle, lower Kurost, teleport. We got our man catcher, right? All right. So the number of items in your inventory doesn't matter because it's the number of items total, which means if I take this ring right here, which subtracts one item from my Haradra cube, but if I put it into my personal stash, it adds one back into my total inventory, which just simply completes the circle. And it just does the same exact thing. Now, normally when I did this for the super chest at work, but the regular clickables may be different. Let's check the regular clickables and let's see if the regular clickables have the same behavior. Um, and as you can see, we still have the correct man catcher uh, and the 218, right? So, and then to demonstrate this even further, let's take the healing potion out of our inventory. We're going to drop that on the ground. Um, and you'll see that it's no longer a man catcher. So we took that healing potion out of our inventory, we dropped it on the ground, we lost the number of items required to find the man catcher, the man catcher now or falls. Um, is time a variable? It's not a variable for super chests. Um, I can tell you that for a fact. Um, we've already checked super chests in Exodian, and time is definitely not a variable for super chests. It has, it has nothing to do with it, more so that... I'm, I'm trying to think how I can explain this. Um, so the amount of time that you wait doesn't specifically have an effect, but waiting a specific amount of time can potentially corrupt the result, if that makes any sense. Um, if you wait too long... The mercenary, like various things, I don't know, something about the way that the game loads tiles. Like if you wait in an area for a certain specific amount of time, waiting in that area for that amount of time can potentially load more tiles around you. Or your mercenary will run far enough away from you that he will load a tile and potentially corrupt the result in a negative way. An uncontrollable way, essentially, because you don't know exactly what's being done. Um... I'm not sure if that made any sense. Um, and as you can see, now that we put that potion back in our inventory, we now have the Crackman Catcher again. Um, one thing I definitely wanted to try out, though, and I've, I, I do want to come back to this, uh, but one thing I want to try out is essentially killing a monster. Um, I need to find a specific monster in a specific place that drops a... An item for me. Um, I'm trying to think a good place to find a static monster that I can kill every single time. I don't think that's a good option. There's too many there. I want to think maybe Bloodmore might be the best place. I was thinking about this. Bloodmore probably has a zombie out there that I could probably walk out, kill the zombie, um, and then rinse, repeat, and we can just we can just play around with like the the, the killing the zombie over and over again. Do I got any attack spells at all? Why do I have Inferno out of all the spells? think if there's anywhere I can get just like one monster. I mean, 
Eldritch isn't exactly a terrible choice because Eldritch is easy to get to right by the waypoint. Very limited contamination. I was really hoping for something a little bit easier, though. I probably want to respect this girl, too, so she actually has some damage output. I must have been playing around with Inferno at some point. One of the worst skills in the world to kill anything with. Maybe we test this. Um, we need somebody who's a little bit more like easy to to just go in and murder something, like single target wise. Not really have to worry about too much like additional do janks. I think maybe North Star might be the good a good option for this test. Dolls on Durance level three spawning. Um, so your your monster types are actually decided by the, uh, the the seed code. Yes. So when you load into a area, the monsters are basically always going to have the same. There's it, it should be always the same types every single time you go down into a zone with the same monsters. So like if we go down in here right now. Um. What the, where the hell is the door at? Like, holy Jesus. Uh, but you see we got zombies. There's always three types from what I can tell. So zombies, ghouls, and we've got dolls, right? So zombies, ghouls, dolls. You see this guy's name is Sharpshank, right? So we got Sharpshank, right? So let's go, let's go talk to Sharpshank again. Let's see if he's there a second time. Um, monster spawns are actually determined by a, a lot of the movement that you do. So where you go, like what you're doing, um, it, it's it's a little it's a little rough actually because you can you can kind of like screw yourself over just by going a specific way and spawning a specific monster. I've done it a lot. Let's see if he's still here. So who do we got this time? No, no elite here this time. <laughs> so I didn't go the same way. And because I didn't go the same way, Sharpshank wasn't there. And because I didn't load the same tiles in the same order, unfortunately. And it's, it's going to always be that way. Um, I really want to try out uh, Eldritch. I think that's what I want to play around with. All areas are three types, Augusto. All are three. Three types. There's always three types of monsters. Every single area spawns with three types of monsters. Chaos Sanctuary is uh, Finger Mages, uh, Oblivion Knights, and Pit Lords. Um, it, those do, that one doesn't change, by the way. That one's always that way. But depending on what zone you go to, like for instance, if you go to Frigid Highlands... Frigid Highlands, um, like for instance, with this particular one, we've got Demon Imps, right? So we've got Demon Imps confirmed. Um, and then we run around a little bit, and we these guys don't count because they always spawn next to what's-his-face. So that's not uh, that's not a monster type. We've also got Slingers. Um, slingers count. So we've got Slingers, and we've got Demon Imps. And then we need to find the third monster type. So what is the third monster type? Uh, we just go a little bit until we find the third monster type. It's not always readily apparent what the third monster type is. Sometimes they can be hidden. Um, I've noticed that, like, depending on which role they are, you have different densities of different monster types. So you'll end up with, like, really high density of one specific monster type over the others. Um, in this particular case, it looks like we just have spear cats and imps, but there should still be a third type here. They're about to imp me to death over here, though. Let me get out of here before I die. Let's try this again.
Level 3 doesn't have dolls in Durance of Hate. Or you said Durance of Hate level 3. Durance of Hate level 3 doesn't have dolls. It's not possible. Endurance of Hate level 3 is static. Um, you will always end up with the council members, and you'll always end up with the ghouls. That's just how that works. It's a it's a set, like, number of monsters. Same as Chaos Sanctuary. I thought you were talking about level 2. Uh, my brain, I'm brain fudged here for a minute. Yeah, level level three doesn't really change the monster types. It's it's always ghouls and it's always council members, and nothing else really ever goes there. Hmm. Sounds like a very rare occurrence. Because I've never seen him in level 3. That's so much crap in my inventory. So much crap in my inventory. Oh yeah, I remember that. My chromatic amulet of the squid. I forgot about you. Beautiful squidly. Squidly squidliness. Yeah, now that I think about it, this character might not be the best character for this. Since he's not really very well geared. This is my my North Star Smiter from my solo cell found run, so he's a little rough. He definitely is a bit rough. Let's throw the smoke on him so he actually has some resistances. Barely killing demon imps over here. Hmm. All right, let's um, let's try a different character. Somebody who's a little bit better at. I need somebody that can just like straight up single target punch somebody's wiener right off. Maybe this one would work. Maybe this uh, this is a theory craft character I made a little while ago. It's a, a multi shot poison boson. She actually turned out pretty well, pretty good. I think she was a pretty good turnout. I did her theory craft uh, a while back actually. She's filled with 451 poison small charms and lots of poison facets, and it was interesting to test her out, and see how well she worked. Let's uh, use guided arrow so we can pinpoint just. Eldritch, because that's all we really want to do. We just want to pinpoint Eldritch. Um, all right, so let's save and exit. All right, so we're going to go Phrygian Islands. And I'm just going to try and pinpoint out Eldritch. Alright, so Eldritch gave me a circlet and a ring, both blue. Let's see if we can replicate that. I'm afraid that with these little imps flying around and getting their booty cheeks clapped, it's going to be relatively difficult to um, to get a solid drop from him. Okay, Van Braces and Ornate played. I still don't think we got a, a good roll here. I might have to take my neck, my uh, minion out. I'm pretty sure that the order in which you kill the monsters, I know this sounds kind of weird, but I'm pretty sure the order in which you kill the monsters has something to do with it as well. And I'm probably going to have to strip my mercenary of his equipment um, because he is unfortunately, I think, corrupting the results. I can't carry anymore. Just make it so that he can't kill anything, which would be preferable. All right, let's try this again. Ugh. 
This will be the first time we really do any testing on the monsters themselves, uh, with exception of some of the unique testing we did for the bosses. God, why my eyes hurt? Uh, too much watching that Fallout TV show. That's what it is. Which was good, by the way. It was good. I liked it. Large charm and a spire helm. Could be because I drank a potion. This is going to be even more difficult because I do think that drinking a potion changes the result as well. And I'm pretty sure my mercenary could potentially be changing the result, which means I need, probably need to get him killed. I'm not exactly sure how to optimally test this without having too many variables corrupting things. It's, uh, it's a little rough. I mean, one thing I could do is I could go get my mercenary killed real quick. So let's let's remove him as a variable in the equation. Either you die or I die. The results the same. Man, he hanging in there too, look at him. He said, nah, fool. He said, I ain't going down. Mercenary murdering 101. Poor guy. They're probably gonna murder me first. It would actually be easier if I just died. Like, it's, just, it's easier just to kill myself. All right, yay, we're dead. All right, let's go ahead and fill up on potions. We'll try and keep our potions full for this always. That way we don't have to worry about variables changing. Um, I don't think Eldritch is going to work because there's too many monsters like around him. And there's, there's too much going on. We need something a little bit more static. Like a monster that we can just bop down and then just, just, just mew it, right? So let's try this. And there's nobody here. Okay, we got three Erdars. Let's see if any of them actually drop us anything. Gold pile. I don't think I can kill Pendle before all his minions rise from the grave. I'm trying to think of like individual monsters that are kind of by themselves. I think. Yeah. I mean, that's not a bad option. Maybe. I'm gonna use all my my knowledge of the game to try and figure out like where a particular monster might be that's static near the waypoint that doesn't require a huge number of variables. I mean, there's not a lot to be perfectly honest. It's uh, it's kind of a short list. A lot of these require too much effort to get to, which changes things too much, so that I can't test stuff. One option could be Fire Eye. I'm thinking about Fire Eye. Fire Eye, if he's directly next to the, the portal in here, he's very easy to get to, and he could be an option. So we start in Loot Golain. Um, go to Arcane Sanctuary. Enter the portal here. And there he is, right by the waypoint. Limited, limited, uh, but unfortunately, I just don't think we're, this girl is strong enough to be able to, to dish out the damage we need. 
quickly enough to kill them in the right order. So we need a we need a different character. I think that's the I think that's the play. We just need a character that can actually do it properly. Um Yes. This this character will work quite nicely, actually. This is this is definitely the character to do this on. I got two unidentified small charms in my inventory. Thresh socket is too far away from the portal, unfortunately. I think that the amount of variables that you add there is going to corrupt the data. All right. We got uh, fortitude. Yeah, we do got fortitude. Okay. Okay, a rare hurl bat and a serpentine skin armor. Let's see if we can reproduce that. I didn't drink any potions, did I? I don't think I drank any potions. The run to uh, this waypoint is rather long. Masher boots and an ornate play. I'm a little bit worried about the run to this place. I feel like the run to this waypoint, especially if we're not taking the right directions and blah de blah de blah de blah. God, freaking my HP is a problem too. The they're they're right on the portal and it's it's really kind of nasty. Add some faster run walk charms. Arcane Sanctuary. Large axe and a lock bar axe. I mean, getting the same thing to drop on this guy is uh, a lot more difficult. That's why I'm trying to see if I can isolate one particular monster. I think super uniques are the best option because they always drop two items. Fire Eye, I don't know. You have to load Arcane Sanctuary. You got to run all the way over here. You got to go through the portal, and then when you get there, I mean, it's a little bit difficult to target him directly. Hmm. Let's try with this character instead of the other. Let's try with this character, um, our Eldritch again. We don't have a mercenary. We're not utilizing any other stuff, so let's just try with, with, with this character. We'll just go straight to Eldritch and go kill Eldritch. So Frigid, straight up. And we got Cliglaw's shield and a hatchet. Bone Ash, I was thinking of as an option too. Um, he's a little far away from the waypoint, but he's he's definitely in the same spot every single time, which is certainly something to be said for him. Page plate and horned helm. I mean, it doesn't seem to be like I'm able to get the same result from these monsters. I mean, it's. It's not quite the same when it comes to the monsters because the monsters are moving around and I have to chase the monster. 
I mean, it might take me quite a while to be able to reproduce results. I'm also pretty sure that the order in which you kill the monsters has something to do with what they drop as well, which... Stygian Pike and Assault Helmet. Assault Helmet again, but not a stick in Pike. So Assault Helmet and an Atagan. Mm. It's got to be reproducible, and it's not reproducible at the current moment. Um, what about those little monsters that are always outside the gate? Isn't there always, like, a monster just, like, sitting right out the gate, outside the gate here, like, every single time? I could have sworn there was like... No? It's not. Do I need to test it in hell? Not necessarily. I guess testing it in a lower difficulty certainly wouldn't hurt. I mean, there are some reasons why I probably wouldn't want to go to normal difficulty, because it would limit the pool of items that we're dropping too much. Um, I try Nightmare, though. I feel like Nightmare's not too ridiculously low. We still have a pretty large pool of items that could potentially drop, because the monster level is not too bad. All right, so we got demon hide gloves on the first kill. Let's see if we get demon hide gloves on the kill again. Just, uh, just curious. Uh, it could be as simple as this. It could just simply be run out here and kill these monsters again. Of course, there's like three of them here, and each one I think is a different monster. I have to make sure I kill the same same monster every single time. That uh, went to hell instead of nightmare. And of course, they run away whenever you kill one. So, as soon as you kill one, they're all just going to run, which is going to spread them around and it's going to make it more difficult to contain the tiles. So, I don't really think that these are good options. If there was a uh, a zombie there are two zombies right here. That would actually work better. Let's let's do the zombies. Zombies are slower. Um, they don't run away. There's less going on with them than with the other monsters. I can also more easily tell which zombie I'm attacking. So we'll just head straight through here. And we've got our two two zombies. Neither one drops anything good, unfortunately. Was that 74 gold and some bolts? Okay, so we have a repeatable result. Notice, 74 gold and bolts every single time. So this is this is good. This is what we need. We need we need a repeatable result. We're, the the variables are not changing so much here, so we're able to repeat the same result over and over again, which is exactly what we want. Um, and we have a a set drop that's coming from these two monsters. That I click hell instead of nightmare because those guys were a lot harder to kill. I did click hell instead of nightmare. 
Okay. So we have a set variable. We, we know what's dropping. It's 74 gold and a pair of bolts. Now we start to tweak the, the variables, and we start to see if we can change the results uh, a little bit to what we're looking for. So 74 gold and bolts every single time. Now if we kill them in a different order, so let's, this is a good this is a good opportunity. So does order of kill affect the result, right? So this is this is this will be interesting. So let's put a new entry here. We're going to put an entry for monster kills. Um, and we're going to pose the question. Well, well first off, we pose the question um, can the drops be repeated like containers? slash super chests um, and the answer to that question was yes so yes it was um, and then we pose the second question which is does the order in which you kill the monsters change the result um, so this is going to be the first variable that we test and we'll, we're going to see if that's a yes or a no um, so this will be really easy because we have two zombies and we can obviously tell which zombie is on the right and which zombie is on the left. And I've always been killing the zombie on the right first, which drops the 74 gold. Then I kill the zombie on the left, which drops the bolts. So this time we'll kill the zombie on the left first, which drops a razor bow. And we kill the zombie on the right, which drops 213 gold. So we can probably say this is yes, um, but let's do a little bit more testing just to be sure. So if the order of the kills changes the result then we should be able to repeat this. So by repeating the kill in the same pattern, we can then determine whether or not the monsters are giving us the same result all the time. So yes. So this is definitely a yes. So the order of the kill does in fact change the result. All right. So now we have a razor bow. So this is where things get interesting. So the razor bow does have options that it can potentially be other things. Um, if we go into the list for the razor bow, the razor bow I'm pretty sure can be rip hook. Um, that's the unique version. So uh, rip hook is an item that can potentially roll uh, with a you know a large enough amount of magic find, right? Right. So now comes an interesting test. So the interesting test is basically this: if we stack magic find on this character. Um, can we change that more? Also, does the number of items that we're carrying in our inventory have any effect on what is dropping? Um, so let's let's pose a couple more questions. So we're going to keep on going. So does item, we're going to call it item count, because item count seems to be the official name for basically what we're doing. Um, so does item count change the result? Um, and then we're going to yes or no that, right? So the easiest way to do this with item count is to just simply add a potion. So we're going to add, or just anything. It doesn't really matter what we add. So we just buy one thing. doesn't matter what it is. We've now added an antidote potion to our inventory, which is one more on the count. And let's see if adding one more into the count changes what drops. Um, so let's, let's do the, we're going to do the razor bow, um, so killing the guy on the left first instead of killing the guy on the right. Um, so we got razor bow and 40 gold, right? So let's drop that back on the ground. Razor bow and 40 gold. So let's do this one more time. Um, and is it still razor bow and 40 gold? Razor bow and 213 gold. So the amount of gold changed for the number of items in my inventory? Is that what we're basically seeing here? Um, let's duplicate this one more time. Just to make sure that it's not a fluke. This is this is all part of scientific You're testing. Welcome. Is you've got to verify your results and you have to make sure that everything can be reproducible, right? So it has to be reproducible. So let's do this one more time. We bought the antidote potion again. And we're back to 40 gold. All right. Now, to make sure that it is item count and not something else, we have to verify whether or not it is actually item count. Item count does not care what the item is. Item count only cares about the number of items. 
Now, if it cares what the item is, then changing the item will change the result. If it doesn't care what the item is and it only cares about the count, then it will obviously stay the same. So we're going to change out the item. So we have the same count. So we've changed out the antidote potion for the staff. But it's a different item, right? So if the count is the same, if it, if it is a count, like just the, the number of total items, then it should still be the 40 gold. Um, and we're gonna we're gonna add some more items too. So we're gonna we're gonna play around with this. It didn't change the razor bow though, which is really interesting. It only changed the gold. Um, perhaps it only changes the gold. Okay, so now we know that this does item count change the result. Um, we need to kind of like put an explanation here. Yes, but only gold so far. Um, and what do I mean by so far? Well, we've only added one item. Um, it could be that we just need to add more, right? So maybe we just need to change the variable more. Maybe we haven't changed it enough to cause the razor bow to change to something else, right? So let's add more items. Um, in this case, let's just go ahead and grab a bunch of antidote potions. So let's just stack on uh, as many as we can potentially grab. Um, so in this particular case, we've added, uh, what is that, two, four, six, eight, uh, nine. So we've added nine total variable items to the item count, right? So let's see what we get now. My beard's itchy. I got an itchy beard. You didn't need to know that, but I'm going to tell you anyway. My beard's itchy. Um, and we're still at 40 gold. Interesting. Uh, let's drop one potion and let's try again. Oh, yeah, I was going to hop into voice chat. I totally forgot. Let me hop into voice chat. Just in case anybody wants to show up and yak a lack a lack. One hundred and thirty nine gold this time. Um, I did kind of wait a little bit there because I was hopping into voice chat. So let's let's double check that result just to make sure that we are getting one hundred and thirty nine again. Notice the razor blow bow still hasn't changed, though. So, although the gold is changing, the razor bow doesn't seem to be changing. So let's drop another potion to reduce the, the item count by another one. I said my beard was itchy, but that's blood. So much to cut myself or something. 141 gold, that's a different result than we had before, right? What we had before was, what, 139 or something? What the hell is that? It hurts. Right in the middle of my demon horns. Right in the middle of my demon horns. Right in the middle of my demon horns. Don't tell me y'all never notice. Y'all never notice that my beard has demon horns on it? It's totally not deliberate either. It's just that's just how it goes. It's just like a it doesn't grow in the middle, it only grows it only grows on the sides and it looks like two demon horns. I don't know. I remember when I was a uh, kid and it would first started growing in, people were like Like, do you cut it like that? Is that how you're cutting it? Are you cutting it so that it grows into demon horns? And I'm like, No, I'm not cutting it so it grows into demon horns. That's the way it grows. Guess I'm just a demon. God. Man, whatever it is, it's bleeding profusely. I'll tell you what. It's always nice to bleed profusely. 141. Okay. Let's drop another uh, antidote potion. So let's go a little bit deeper down the rabbit hole. Thirty-six gold this time, and notice that we've got something additional that has changed. So not only do we have a change in the gold amount like the previous times, but now we have something interesting which is occurring, which is 
socketed. Look, now the razor bow is socketed. Um, and this is something that we're actually going to have to pick up and check. So the razor bow has been socketed with three sockets. That's quite interesting. Let's see if that reproduces or if that's just something that's completely random. I'm actually kind of curious about that because up until this point, I haven't seen any items roll with sockets so far. And I'm not sure if that's the number of items that has been, uh, been going on. Uh, so, do we still get socketed? We're still getting socketed. Same number of sockets? No, it's four sockets this time. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta dive deeper down this rabbit hole. Is the number of sockets not determined by any of the variables that we're currently controlling? Is it just random? It seems like the number of sockets may be just random. Because although that it's rolling socketed, so it's rolling socketed, but it doesn't seem to be rolling the same number of sockets every single time because it rolled three once and now it rolled four times, two times in a row. Um, let's do this a couple times because I kind of want to see if there's any kind of like static amount on the number of sockets. God, freaking... I'm bleeding to death over here, guys. And we're still at four sockets, and it's 138 gold. Four sockets, 138. Is it going to stay at four sockets? One Because I could have sworn it was three sockets before. But maybe it was something to do with, like, how I changed my movement pattern. It did. I did take, like, two swipes at that guy because I missed that one time. I don't know if, like, the number of swipes that I took at the monster seemed to have changed things. Kubus, your butthole stinks. How about that? <laughs> I said it, and I meant it. Okay, well, I don't know if the three was a fluke, but it seems like we're getting four steady every single time. So maybe it was just a variable change of something like where we went. Maybe we just kind of walked a little bit further than we did the previous time. But it seems like every single time now we're getting four static. So... There definitely seems to be something static about the number of sockets. I thought for a second there that the, the number of sockets might have been rolling, but it doesn't really appear to be the case because we seem to be still getting the same four sockets every single time. So maybe it was just because I missed. That's an interesting... Um, that's an interesting thing to think about, though. God... So here's a here's an interesting thought. Does the number of swings that I take or like abilities that I cast, like does that somehow affect the um the outcome? That sounds kind of weird, but <laughs> I'm in danger. What's up, Agra? What's up, Ginger? <clears throat> so I rewound your video for that time you got the three sockets on the razor bow. Uh-huh. And I noticed something different. You took a slightly different walk path. Yeah. So every time you've been going up there, you've been going between those two little black areas. Well, because I'm trying not to load any additional tiles, basically. Well, the Cause... time you went and you got the three sockets, you went around the right-hand side of those. You didn't go through the middle. Okay. So I'm let's see. If, let's see if we can. Well, it, it might. I might have loaded the tile like above, because that's that's one of the reasons why I try and take the same path. Is because if I if I don't take the same path, I could potentially load the wrong tiles, which is something that we need to test. Also, is we need to test whether tile loading affects this. I'm pretty sure it does. Um, but let's let's just do a quick. Um, so does tile loading affect the drops? Um, and I'm pretty sure the answer to this one's going to be yes. Um, but then this one also does item count change the result? Um, it, at first, it was only gold. But I think now we can confidently say, yes, it does change the result. Um, but it, I think we also need to add in gold slash sockets. That's the only thing that's changed so far. So it, the item became socketed, and it changed the gold, but it didn't. It, we didn't get like a quality increase. It just changed from a white item to a non-socketed item. Let's, let's do a quick... Um, 
a tile loading real quick. So we're just going to check and see the tile loading progress. We can just do this really easy by just going to Cold Plains and then going to Rogue Encampment and then just doing the same thing and see if the see if changing the tile changes the drops. I'm like I'm like 99% sure this is going to change the drops. Not only did it change the drops, notice we only have one zombie. Um, so this is something else that's actually really important to this that I've actually discovered is that is that tile loading not only does it have an effect on what the monster drops, um, which we can type in yes, it also has an effect on what monsters drop are actually spawning. So the uh, the spawn type slash position slash quantity um, all of it of the of the monsters also seems to be affected so in this particular case if we go to cold plains first and then we come here there's only one zombie instead of two um, and also the item that he drops changes as well so like it's it's actually pretty crazy because depending on where you go you can not only change the monsters into uh, different monsters. You can also change them into champions, elites. You can control what name they have. Um, I've played around with this a little bit and with like elite monsters. You can actually control the name of the monster and like the effects that the monsters have just by changing the variables a little bit. So like going to inner cloister first instead of going there and then traveling out here. Let's see what we get this time. And, and, it, and it's going to change every single time we, we change the variables just a little bit. Uh, this time we've got four zombies instead of the one and instead of the two that we had before so we're getting we're getting different quantities of zombies in this particular zone depending on which we go to and i'm pretty sure if we do this enough we'll eventually change the monsters into champions or elites um it'll be a a, a constant thing where we're constantly like just manipulating which monsters are spawning it's actually quite neat um, but this also comes with a, a kind of like an odd caveat is we can't test whether variables affect the drops from the monster <coughs> because we also are very obviously seeing that the variables are changing the monsters themselves. So I can't kill the same monster with different variables because the same monster with different variables very well might not even be the same monster anymore. It's a different monster entirely, which makes it very difficult to test that particular variable on these monsters. The only two variables that I think I'm going to be able to test with this are number one, item quantity, and number two is magic find. We're going to test magic find too. Alright, so we're still at the four socketed razor bow. Uh, so let's drop another antidote potion, bringing down our total quantity by again. I'm interested to see if it ever turns into like a magic item or if it ever turns into like a rare um, or something like that. Or is this mainly just controlling uh, an odder set of variables? Okay, so dropping one more item, we still have a four socket and 138, so nothing's changed. Let's drop one more antidote potion. We got 157 gold this time. That's a change. And we are down to a two socket bow. Let's reproduce that. Let's see if the sockets stay the same. So it's not changing on every single variable of removing an item from our inventory, but it is changing on some of them. Dare I even say that it might just be changing on the odd numbers or the even numbers? Because it, it seems like it's only changing when we drop two items as opposed to just simply one. Like maybe the total result is a divisible by two or something like that. I'm not entirely sure. Let's go ahead and drop another one and see if the result changes. Have you ever tried consuming one of the potions to see if that changes anything? It does. Same thing. <clears throat> so this time, while dropping one potion, we did change the result again. So that one gave us the white razor bow again and 56 gold. Interestingly enough, though, um, 
we didn't get a change from the two sockets, so the two sockets stayed the same twice in a row. And then on top of that, it went down to the white and the 56 gold. So let's let's drop one more. I mean, if it holds true that it's every two, then it should still be white and 56 gold again. Now we've got Razor Bow with one socket and 103 gold. So the number of items is directly uh, changing the number of sockets on the item and the amount of gold that drops, but doesn't seem to have anything to do with the quality. The quality doesn't seem to be changing. I mean, we could try something drastic and we could just add a whole bunch of items into our inventory and see if potentially like a huge quantity could change it to something. I mean, we could test every single quantity number up to the moon and back, and it might still not change into anything other than socketed items. I mean, it would be interesting to see if ethereal items also came from this as well. Alright. So, we basically have a full inventory now, with a full Herodric cube. Which is one, two, three, four, two, four, six, eight, ten. It's ten more items than what we had in any of the previous testing. So we're up a pretty large number. Let's, let's see if this has any drastic effect on what falls. So we still have a white bow and 93 gold. Alright, let's drop another potion. It's his vengeance, Paladin, Irene. It's uh it's an offline version of my two handed vengeance paladin. It's not the online version, because the online version is different. Okay, so white and ninety eight gold. It's, it's really odd to me that the number of potions is directly controlling the amount of gold that falls. Were there always two more zombies up above those two? I think so. I just kind of... It might have been my pathing. Like, I might have changed my pathing a little bit there. Yeah, you went over the Impossible. top again. Okay, so this time we've got a socketed bow. Three sockets. Okay. Let's reproduce that real quick. Yeah, it, it, it seems to be like the, the direction that you take, the tiles that you load, all of it, has a direct change on, like, not only the number of monsters, but where they spawn, all of it. It's 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 actually quite interesting. Like, like I'd said in a couple of pre previous videos, it's almost as if the game is alive and is responding to how you behave in the game. So, you know, like, if you are a weirdo and you like run around in circles like an idiot or if you if you like to click on every single rock and like a raccoon like me or if you're uh if you're somebody who goes straight to your objective like it's you're gonna have a different result for every single like play style like of a person of like how you click and where you go it's it's actually kind of crazy i mean i like it i think that's why I think it explains very succinctly why so many people have had so much fun over this game for such a long period of time. Like, because the result is always different. It's like, it's like there's something in our mind that, like, sees the fact that the result is always different and is trying to figure out innately underneath the surface why the result is always different. Um, and we can't quite, like, see the... Uh, I, I don't know, like, uh, the gut feeling inside of our chest tells us there's something going on and we can't quite figure it out. I mean, I, I know a lot of you guys probably had the same gut feeling as me, that the game wasn't quite, like, telling us the truth about how the items were falling. Michael possibly brings up a good point. Is the Poison Nova procking changing the variables as well? So we tried to test um, potentially, like, something like that, which is... Like, the skill activations seem to have an effect. And it didn't really seem like it. Um, I mean, I could sit there and I could, like, spam attacks by the door. And it doesn't seem to have an effect. I also tried things like casting 
the uh, ice armor and whatnot. But I mean, like, I could sit out here, and as long as I don't take a different path, I could just, like, spam my attack for a little bit here. And then uh, go over here. And they're still here. Still draws me the razor bow and the gold. I mean, it's... I'm not entirely sure, to be honest. It uh, it doesn't seem as though, like, the effects are actually causing it, though. And also, I mean, the first kill is the razor bow. So even if the kill, the on-kill effect was causing anything, it wouldn't cause anything for the first one. It would only compound onto the second zombie. You got a different... You had four sockets on that bow last time and more gold. You had 198 gold. I think I picked up an additional antidote potion, though. I'm not entirely sure. Let's let's test it again. I'm, ch I'm checking now. I'm, I'm scr scrubbing back. <laughs> Cody, you better be nice to the chinchies. Nope, you said the same three open slots in your inventory. Alright, so straight there. Killed them both. We got the razor bow. Um, how many sockets is this razor bow? Four. One, two, three, four. I wonder if it's still the total amount sockets. of time. So I don't, I don't see. Well, this is the whole thing. So time, I don't think has anything to do with it. It does, however, seem to be something within the system that causes chunks to load. I've, I've noticed that it's almost like some sort of, I guess, programming within the game that if you stand still for a certain period of time, it will start loading chunks around you, I think, in a circle because it assumes that you're going to stay in the area for a certain period of time. Like, say you're running through an area as fast as you can. It probably has some sort of algorithm that doesn't load very many chunks because you're going really fast in a straight line and you're not staying there for a particularly long period of time. But let's say you go to Stonyfield Waypoint and you're sitting there for a bit, or you're, or you're in around the same area for a prolonged period of time. I think the game starts then loading chunks around you in a circle to kind of like preemptively assume that you're going to be exploring the area. So while I don't think time is a factor, I do think that if you stand still for too long in one place, it starts to load chunks around you with changes the result, which isn't necessarily the same thing as time. It's kind of hard to explain. No, it makes sense because the game's going to optimize memory loading. <clears throat> and and it's and it's weird because I think a lot of people saw that and they were like, "Oh, well, if I wait a certain period of time here, then it changes the result." But I but if you if you do it a different way, you'll notice the result stays the same. So I mean, I think we've got enough testing from this to verifiably say that the potion count is changing something, but it's not changing the quality of the item. So the quality of the item never changes from gray or white, essentially, right? So it's always a gray or a white item, and it's never been anything other than a gray or a white item. No matter how many potions we add or how many potions we subtract, it's always gray or white, right? So... so while the potion or while, while the total number of items is having a, an effect and it is an, a variable on what's falling from the monsters, it's not the variable that gives us the quality, right? So it's just the variable that gives us the sockets, essentially. I'm assuming, it, I'm assuming that if we do this enough, we may also come across an ethereal item, which I would like to see. Um, I feel like coming across an ethereal item would be an interesting... Uh, consideration because the ethereal being tied into the sockets could be neat. But the problem with this is, is we're doing a razor bow and gold, and bows can't be ethereal, so I think that was a no-drop roll. Uh, bows can't be ethereal, so that doesn't help us. Um, we would need something that can potentially be ethereal to test the ethereal theory. Um... We could try adding in a variable 
to change the result of what they drop. Let's try this real quick. <laughs> I can only replicate this offline right now. <laughs> right now. You guys, you guys keep that in mind. Right now. You guys see me walking around next season with 62 burr runes in my inventory. You might want to be a little cautious. Cock up, throw me a bombastic side eye over there. Does that make you wonder if anyone's ever figured this out and it's just been a well-kept secret? Um, with the advent of bots, I think very well, yeah. Mm. I think it very well could have been figured out by now. I think, I think, um, and this is, this is the simplest method, and I think this is the simplest one that could potentially be being used right now by a large number of people, which is basically that somebody probably somewhere at some point figured out that these variables existed, right? And then once they figured out that these variables existed, they deliberately set up, say, 10, 20, 30, maybe even 100 bots, um, and every single bot would be set to farm, say, Mephisto. Um, but each bot would have slightly different variables. Like, instead of going st directly to Mephisto, you would have somebody go, um, you know, to Lower Kuros first, and then Mephisto. And then the other bot would go, you know, to Travancall first, and then Mephisto. And then another bot would go to Spider Forest, and then Durance of Hate, and then Travancall, and then to Mephisto. And basically, the whole purpose of this would just be to run, like, a hundred bots all using different variables that you've now learned, so you know what the variables are. You learn them, right? And then you just run all these bots, like have them go like a thousand times or five thousand times or whatever, each one using a different set of variables, right? And then at the end, you take all the uh, items and you compile them into like an Excel spreadsheet or something, and you like pick out all the good items, and then you compare all the lists, right? And then once you compare all the lists, you're like, oh, well, look, this guy right here that went to Catacombs then Travancall, and then Mephisto got like six soges. And just like that, you run all your bots doing that particular pattern, and then all of a sudden you have literally buku number of soges that you can just trade off and do whatever you want with. And I, I truly do think that that's probably something that someone has done along the way, where they've literally figured out that using this particular variable to farm this particular boss leads to better results than any of the other variables, and then they just use that set of variables every single time they kill that boss. And um, and it's something as simple as that, but it would take a large amount of time and effort to run the bots and figure out which pattern was the most ideal. And that ideal pattern might not be the most ideal pattern for every boss, but it would be for that particular boss. Okay, so I don't I don't think that item. Uh, I was trying to do the the breastplate. That's right. I was trying to do. I was trying to see if I can get an ethereal. I want to see if I can get an ethereal. That's the that's the main test right now. Does item count affect not only the sockets but also the ethereal status of the item? I got a breastplate to drop. I think it was going to stony, or maybe it was cold plants. I don't know. No, because when I when I do stony, there's no zombie here, so it must have been cold plains. I don't know. I talk real big about like what potentially you could do, but then at the same time, I also know that um, like unless I'm willing to put in all the work and actually test all this stuff and figure it out, that it it would never get done. So. Okay, so we have the breastplate. It's falling now. We have a pattern, a specific pattern. We can get the breastplate to fall every single time. It falls when we go to cold plains first, and then we come over here and we kill. It ends up one zombie, and then we kill the one zombie, and he drops the breastplate. All right, so let's drop antidote potions, and we're going to keep dropping them until we see if we get a socketed. Um, I'm looking for an ethereal. I just want to see if the number of items affects ethereal status. That's that's my current my current testing. Can make a task force. Okay, so no change there. Let's drop another potion. 
Do I think it's possible to create a straight but not perfect pathway to any item? Yes. Um, the problem with this, though, is that you would have to know what the seed code is. The seed code is something that changes online with every single run. And uh, I have to accidentally witch straight to them again this time. It changes this, uh, with every single game that you make. So you would have to know what the seed code is to know the pathway to the item. Um, I mean, it's a lot like when you go order a pizza, right? And, you know, you go order the pizza at Papa John's or Domino's or whatever your favorite is. And, and you know, like you put in everything that you want, but then when you go to actually order the pizza, it says, all right, what's your zip code? And then it finds the local store near you, right? Because it's trying to find the correct path for you. Your location is different than everybody else's location, and you might be closer to, you know, like the... The, the Wisconsin store as opposed to the, you know, the other store, right? So they're trying to give you the, the best store in your particular area. Well, if you don't know the seed code, you don't know basically the zip code and you can't figure out what the best location is to go for the stuff that you're trying to get. And, um, and that's part of the issue, right? So finding out what the seed code is online is part of the problem. And it's something that I think I do have a solution for, um, but it's going to take some time. Um, you might be wondering what the hell I'm talking about. I, I'm not talking about a, a, a technological solution, you know, like some sort of program that reads the seed code from online. I'm, I'm not that I'm not that smart when it comes to, to like programming things. What I'm talking about is something else entirely, which is figuring out the seed code by knowing what item falls from the monster. So essentially how it would work in theory is that you would find a source that is the same across all seed codes. Um, well, we got a Chris this time. Did I, did I do something wrong? So you find a source that's the same across all seed codes, and there are things that are the same across all seed codes. I've, I've been investigating this, and, um, and interestingly enough, there are certain things that are identical no matter what seed code you're in, they're always there, and they're and they're always you know in the same spot, and um, those things could potentially be used to figure out the seed codes, and it's only it's only a matter of time and patience. Um, one such item that literally could potentially be used to figure out the seed codes online, which I'm currently investigating, is this corpse right here, um, in the inner cloister. There is always a corpse here. No matter what seed code you're on, no matter online or offline, no matter hell difficulty, nightmare, or or normal, it doesn't matter. This corpse right here is always here in every single difficulty, every single mode, and every single seed. It's a planted corpse. And potentially what you could do is you could record every single drop that you basically get from each individual corpse in each individual seed code essentially recording all 65,255 seed codes and you could put it into an excel spreadsheet and then what you would do is is you would a first thing that you would do whenever you got into an online game is you would walk directly to rogue encampment click on inner cloister click on the corpse and then you would go huh Superior Grim Wand with 15% enhanced in two sockets. You would then go Control F on your Excel spreadsheet. You would search for Superior Grim Wand with 15% enhanced in two sockets. You would find it, and more than likely, it would be a unique drop specific to that seed code, and then you would know what seed code you're in. You would then proceed to go to a second Excel spreadsheet, which would have all the fancy drops for all the fancy seed codes, and you would plug in the seed code for this particular map, and it would go, hey, a burr rune drops from X spot in River of Flame, and all you have to do is click on Black Marsh first, then City of the Damned, then River of Flame, and then click on X little little uh, clickable that's always by the stash, and boof, a burr rune pops out. And in this way, if you set it up properly and you, you've got enough of the data, yeah, you could literally just go straight to the place where you know where the item is once you know what seed code you're in. Another interesting use for this is, is if you could potentially figure out the seed code by using this method, which would take some time, another interesting thing you could do is roll perfect rune words which is actually kind of crazy. 
So the seed code actually directly influences the role that you get for your rune word, right? So like when you're, you know, you're getting like your Breath of the Dying or whatever, right? And you're trying to roll like your perfect Breath of the Dying or your perfect Grief or whatever it may be. Well, if you could potentially know what seed you're in, you would know whether or not that's a good role for, you know, getting, say, a perfect CTA or a perfect Grief or a perfect whatever, right? So you could potentially, in a way... Essentially, just keep you just keep coming here. You just keep clicking, clicking on this corpse, trying to find the right seed code. Might take you like a thousand tries. Might take you ten thousand tries. Who knows? But eventually, once you find the right seed code that has like the perfect roll for your grief, you roll it, and boom, Bob's your uncle. You get a perfect grief. Yeah, Spike Thorn, or, or what was his name? I can't remember his name right off the top of my head. Why am I freaking... I got a hole in my chin? I got a hole in my chin, guys. We still haven't gotten an ethereal item. Well, let's, let's keep going. I'm getting sidetracked. I just want to see if I get an ethereal item. Um, I'm going to at least go through the antidote potions that are in my inventory and see if the, um, the ethereal item shows its ugly face. Show your ugly face, ethereal item. Still a white breastplate. Okay, let's drop another item. Hey, <laughs> you kind of hope I never figure it out. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm a little bit on the fence of even if I do ever figure it out, I may not tell you guys. <laughs> Uh, I, I might figure it out for myself and just keep it to myself. And I'll just I'll just never let you guys know. Uh blah, 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 blah. So we got one socket breastplate, but it's not ethereal. Okay, let's let's drop another potion. We're going to drop another potion. We put it on the ground now. And then we test some more stuff. Because we are the one named Sailor Moon. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that was the Sailor Moon song, by the way. Fighting evil by moonlight. Testing exploits by daylight. Never running from a zombie. He is the one named Ginger Ginger. <laughs> oh man, keep it to yourself until Blizzard bans you, huh? <laughs> I don't know if how I don't know how Blizzard would ever patch it to be perfectly honest. It doesn't seem like it's patchable. I did have an idea though that um they could potentially shift uh, still not ethereal, but one socket. They could potentially shift the like the loot tables slightly. To, uh, to cause all the recorded entries to be essentially wrong. But then we'll, what somebody could do is then figure out the offset, and then once they figure out the offset, you could potentially just fix it all right back again. So I don't really... I'm not really sure exactly what they would do once it's, like, entrenched. I think the reason why I'm so interested in this, and I, and I think the reason why you guys are interested in this as well, is that... At the end of the day, I think we all believed that we were playing a fair system that, you know, like everybody had the same chance to get an item and nobody was really ahead of anybody else, you know, like in chances. Like if if th 10 people all farmed a thousand Andariel runs, you know, and like one of them got a Soge and the other ones didn't, that it was just luck, right? And it was just, you know, the random chances, you know, luck, the guy just happened to get a Soge and you guys just happened to not, right? But I think one, what we've proved is that that's not the case, that the guy who got the Soge probably did something different that you weren't doing, and that's why he got the Soge. You know, he, he, he took a slightly different path, or maybe he was more inefficient in his teleporting, so he had more variables that he was adding in. I mean, there could be a hundred, hundred different things that were causing it. Maybe he goes and kills Pendle first before he does his Andorial. 
Like, you know, there's, there's just a, a ton of different things that could potentially change the result, and that one guy who's getting the Soge and you're not could potentially just be adding in one thing that you're not adding in. Maybe he picks his nose for five minutes before he goes and does Andariel. I mean, you don't really know. You don't really know what he's doing. I mean, let's just let's just say that we don't want to know exactly what he's doing because it could be gross. Can you do the same for other Diablo games? I would assume not. Curiosity killed the gamer. Now, this this game is unique because it uses a form of random number generation, which is called pseudo random number generation, which is basically where they f faked they faked the number generation. Honestly, if I knew exactly how they had set up the random number generator in this game, I would probably duplicate it for my own game. <laughs> because I I truly believe that the pseudo random number generator is the core at what makes this game special. Okay. So, all right, so we still don't have an ethereal when we have gotten socketed, but no ethereal. So let's let's keep rolling with this a little bit. It's still pretty random. I mean, I can agree with you to an extent, Ryan, is that, yeah, the path is still pretty random. But it's his path. So it's it's his specific path. That's why he got it. Because that's who he is. It's not random to him because that's just the way that he does things. You know, the guy who got the Soj, he just, he just happens to go a specific way because that's the kind of guy he is. He's the kind of guy that raccoons all the stuff on the way. You know, he's the, he's the kind of guy that... Uh, that stops to kill that elite pack and and you're the guy that doesn't and so because he's the guy that stops to kill the elite pack and you don't well then he's you know he's going to get he's going to get the soge and you're not and and that's just the way it is I'm that kind of guy I'm the raccoon guy I'm the guy who clicks on everything who raccoons everything who literally just like kills elite packs like I can't I can't run by elite packs without murdering them like like there's just a constant never ending struggle in my head like I'm literally teleporting to go kill something and then I'll see like a big juicy champion pack and I'm like oh. <laughs> and I gotta stop and I gotta kill it I mean it's just me you're not gonna stop and kill it I'll stop and kill it and then and that's the difference like that's why our drops are different. <laughs> Got the song stuck in my head. Never running from a Kuba's fart. Who am I kidding? I always run from the Kuba's farts. Still not seeing any ethereal. Um, I've already man, I've almost dropped all my antidote versions, so I think we're I think we're running low. I mean, I, obviously it's a smaller sample size, and ethereal could be part of it. Maybe ethereal is just much more rare. I don't know, but it definitely does seem like the. Oh dang it! I did the wrong. I did the wrong do jink. You got a skunk following you around for two days? That's terrible. Oh, what did I do wrong? Did I go to the wrong waypoint? He's my my zombie's not there this time. He was just missing. He's a missing zombie. What's up, inhumane? Inhumaze. How would this affect keys? Um, 
probably pretty drastically. I mean, I would assume that keys are no different than anything else that drops from the monsters. Another one socket. The zombie got terror tired of dying. No, he's not allowed to get tired of dying. He's a zombie. He's a zombie. Zombies die. That's what zombies do. Oh, I'm glad you guys enjoy it. You know what helps me know that you guys enjoy my videos, right? <laughs> Can you see the smirk on my face? It's called money. I'm just, I'm... <laughs> called doll hairs. You see this? You see this big old monster dog here? You see this big old monster dog here? He eats me out of house and home. Please help me feed the dog. Please, please help me feed the dog. Please, please, the dog is starving. He is hungry. He needs the food, and he threatened to eat me last night. He said, if you don't, do not give me the food, I will eat you while you sleep. He's, he's not joking. Dog food's expensive nowadays. <laughs> No, don't come up here. He's too big. He's too big. Why are you messing with my mouse hand? <laughs> Rude. I said it. I meant it. I'm going to include you in the camera so everybody can see you. Hold on. No, 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 no. Don't go anywhere now. We're including you in. Let me see here. I guess, uh, is it this one? Is it this one? I can't remember if it's this one. <laughs> no, that's not the right one. Hold on. Uh, it's gotta be this one then. Yeah, this is this is the one. This is the one. Alright, good. They'll shove me off the side a little bit, but at least Mr. Monster Dog will be visible so you guys can see him tormenting me. No, no, come back over here. What are you doing over there? Why are you over there? Hiding. Hiding it her. Why don't you come over here? Mess with my mouse hand like you were before. That's right. Come over here. Mouse hand messer. He'll straight up just shove my hand out of the way. Rude dude. So don't tell me. I'll stare at your face. Kubus is a variable. He is a variable. He is most assuredly a variable. Oh, where my zombie at? He's just missing this time. You're right. I think he's tired of dying. I think he's just. I think he's just sick of it. He said, "Look." Enough is enough. He said, how many times you killed me in the last, like, hour? He's like, go pick on somebody else. <laughs> go pick on, go pick on Rockin' Issue or something. Like, dang, I'm just like a little Bloodmore monster. Like, oh, he's gone again. Look, he's not here again. Terrible. All right, I, I'm pretty much ran out of potions anyway, so I don't think there's anything left for me to test on this. I, can, I, I haven't seen any ethereal items, and they don't seem to drop, so... Uh, I don't know. Let's test out something else now. Alright, so let's put these in here. We don't need these. Um, we're going to start testing out magic fine. So we're going to start 10% at a time. And we're going to... Actually, should we should we do 1%? I don't know. Maybe 10%, 1%. Let's try... What? How much magic fine do we have? Do we have any magic fine at all? We do not. Okay. So let's just go ahead and add in 1%. He's only got so many razor bows. <laughs> I swear he's hiding from the camera. I literally made the camera larger just so that he could be seen, and he's literally hiding from the camera. He knows. He knows. Okay, 1%, it's still a razor bow. White. White. I 
Let's go add 2%. Still light and 40 gold. Okay. Let's just keep on going up the list. Actually, you know what? First off, let's let's just test like a massive amount of magic find real quick and let's just see. Because I'm actually kind of curious. I wanna I just wanna see if a massive amount of magic find can jolt the system into forcing a different item. So we got 155, 155, 155, 155, 155, 155. All right. So that brings us up to 1,085% magic find. All right. So let's just do a tech, quick tech, couple tests here, and let's see if just massive amounts of magic find can potentially change the razor bow into something else. Like, will it be anything other than white? That's the question. So we still got a white. Let's try it again. Still white. Let's try again. What's up, Zyphorus? I mean, the general idea here behind Magic Find that everybody has believed for a long time is that Magic Find changes the quality of the item, essentially. So the, the type of item isn't decided by Magic Find, but the quality is, right? So having a 1,000% Magic Find should at least turn it into a blue, right? Should it should at least turn it into a blue. Of course, I killed them in the wrong order, so it dropped different items. But it should at least turn it into a blue item, right? Doesn't doesn't necessarily have to be rare. doesn't necessarily have to be unique. But we should at least see a blue, right? And from what I've tested with the clickables uh, is that it doesn't. So no matter how many times you kill the monster with even an insanely large amount of magic find, it doesn't seem to change the quality of the item ever. Which is interesting. Um, but what's also interesting is exact percentages do seem to change the item, at least for clickables. So we're going to have to test this. Let's test one of my verified percentages. So before, when I tested out Magic Find, um, I verified that 285% changed my man catcher into a rare man catcher. All right. So we're going to we're going to do a quick test real quick and I'm going to get 285% and let's see if that has any effect. Is 285% a magic number? Like is it is it just specific numbers at specific points that change the the drops in very specific ways, right? So like let's let's just go ahead and pull uh, all these except for one. All right. So we got 155 um, and we need to get up to what uh, 2 85 so actually we could probably put another one of these in there right no that no that's that's too much because that brings us up to 300 um so let's grab a 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 what does that bring us up to 235 90 so it's 45. 55, 65, 75, 85, right? All right, so now we are at the magic 285 number that gave us the rare man catcher. Is that going to change the the item into like a rare razor bow? Let's see. So I'm still a white razor bow. No change. All right, let's try adjusting the number slightly up and down just to see if maybe it's near the same number. So first off, let's just take 10 away. Seems like a pretty easy change. So 275 instead of 285. Oh, now we have a blue bow. So 275 specifically gave us a blue bow. 
All right, let's do an interesting secondary test. Uh, first, first, let's leave that on the ground, and let's verify that it is actually giving us the blue bow every single time. So it should give us a blue bow again. Yes. All right. Now, we're going to verify even further by just simply adding 1%. Uh, up or down, doesn't really matter. We're just going to go up because that's the easiest way. So we're going to add 1% up, uh, which is going to bring us from 275 to 276. And let's see if we still get the blue item. So 1% up, we lose the blue item. Um, let's try, well, 1% up losing the blue item kind of sucks. Let's try something else. So this is interesting. I have, I have another, another hunch on this. So keeping the percentage the same, let's try increasing or decreasing the count of items that we have in our inventory. So remember earlier we found out that the number of items that we had in our inventory... Uh, total, uh, was changing the results, uh, but it was only adding sockets and stuff. Like, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't doing what we thought, right? So it wasn't only, it was only just, like, adding sockets to the item. Um, hold on, let's, let's do just enough so that we can pick up the item. That sounds good. And then, um, do, 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 do. Let's take these two charms. It, whether they're in my uh, stash or not doesn't matter. We tested this already. So let's just throw these in here. I'm going to grab an ID scroll so I can actually identify it because I want to see if identifying... Um, changes anything. So let's see. All right. So the Tome of Town Portal unfortunately adds one, so we've got to remove an item to keep the same count as before. Actually, it doesn't matter because we're changing the count. We're deliberately changing the count, so this is fine. All right, so first thing we got to do is we got to go identify the bow. Let's go. Let's go see what happens first because we've changed the count deliberately. Um, let's just get the first look here at what's going on. So is the count changing have any effect on what item is falling? All right, so we have a blue bow, and the blue bow is a tangerine razor bow. Okay. All right, so the next thing we're going to check is, is it the same tangerine razor bow every single time, like it is with the super chests? Okay, so there's our bow. And it's still a tangerine bow. Okay, so we know it's a tangerine bow every single time, which is probably not what we want, right? So let's take our antidote potion and let's drop one antidote potion on the ground, decreasing our total number of items by one. And it's still a tangerine bow. Okay. So the stats on the item are not being determined by the number of items in my inventory. But let's um, let's double, triple check this by dropping a couple more items. So let's drop a couple more antidote potions. Um, let's just leave that. And let's go with just the Tome of Identify, this antidote potion. And let's see if it's still a tangerine bow. The magic find was a dirty, dirty lie. I mean, what we're finding out is that magic find isn't necessarily like a dirty lie, but it's not exactly... It's not exactly telling us the whole truth either. So now we've got a razor bow of slaying. Interesting. 
We did have the tangerine bow in our inventory at that time. So let's leave that on the ground and let's see if it changes again. By leaving that on the ground, you reduced your item count by one, though. Keep that in mind. So now it changed to... Yeah, no, I did it on purpose. So it changed okay. to of worth. So now we have the of worth bow dropping, which is interesting. So the item count seems to be, similarly to the way that super chests, seems to be determining the stats on the item, um, which is also interesting to also say that it's also determining the number of sockets that the item has. I guess sockets count as a stat. Oh, I don't have my uh, my torch on. Got a no drop roll. At least I'm getting blue items now. So the blue items are coming at a very specific magic find percentage. This is also really interesting. So if I if I take off or remove even one percent magic find, it changes the result back to a white, which is which is really weird. So yeah, it's a it's a of worth again. So this is an interesting thing that we can write down. So um, item count seems to be affecting stats on item, similar to super chests. Uh, so we can pretty much say that this was been confirmed, and uh, and the reason why we can say it's confirmed because we can literally just deliberately change the result by controlling the number of items in our inventory. So that's that's the stats on the item, but not the quality of the item, which is two completely different things. Um, magic find, we have yet to be able to force that to turn into a rare item, though, which is, I mean, I, I don't know what the exact percentage required to force it into a rare item is. Um, we could play around with that and just see if we can find it. Um, let's try a higher percentage than what we were trying before. So let's grab, uh, two 155s, which will bring us up into the 300 range. Yeah. Let's start with 310, and then we'll move from there. You're new to Diablo 2, and you're just checking out some streams? Well, if you check out my YouTube channel, Zyphris, I've got tons of videos on uh, Diablo 2 to help out with newer characters. What we're doing is definitely on the on the more advanced side. I would definitely say we're definitely we're definitely moved into the more advanced territory. Um, but uh, if you check out my YouTube channel, though, I do have tutorial videos, unique item videos, set videos, all sorts of things that you can go over to help you on your journey. The um, unique item videos and set videos and things like that, those are honestly the best because that way you can just play the game and you can just have fun. And when you find a unique item, you can go pull up my video and I'll tell you what it's good for and, you know, go over the item, how the stats work and, like, what classes you might save it for. Like, you know, you might not find an item that's good for you, but it might be good for your friend. And, you know, I can at least tell you that it's good for your friend and you can give it to him. Um, it's, uh, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of videos. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thousands. Literally thousands. Literally. What's up, buddy? What's, What's up, up Chunks? How's it going? Are you finished with your Final Fantasy VII Rebirth? No, I haven't beat it yet. Oh, you terrible person, you. How dare you. How dare you step foot in the mortal realm without having achieved your goal. Well, you know, I've been kind of busy. Oh. I mean, okay. <laughs> Cloud will have to wait for another day. I mean, I'm in, I think, like, chapter 8 or 9. I don't know how many there are. Should have played the PTR. But man, I have a data cap on my internet. Like, there's no point in me doing a 50 gig download or something. Just gonna last a few days. I just watch you guys play it. It was um, get, it, it was it was good. I mean, I got a feedback video up on the Diablo 4 PTR, and I, I think it was I think that was pretty thorough. 
I don't, I don't think I yeah, missed anything. Yeah, I've watched, uh, watched quite a bit of it. It's a step in a better direction. It looks like it. But... Hey, Augusta with the membership. Thank you, Augusta. I've Welcome. Staying in Welcome. D2 land. Yeah, it still seems just that, like, if you're not on your cooldowns, you don't have defense. There's just... You can't really... I don't know why they like to set up games like that. Alive, alive, dead. Alive, live, live. Full health, full health, dead. It's just... Oh, I had I had some weird things happen. You remember when I was playing and like I couldn't figure out what the hell was killing me, but I would just like I'd be doing fine and then all of a sudden it was just like straight dead. And I'm like, what the yeah. hell even what the hell even got me? And I couldn't even figure it out. Going back on the slow motion replays and I still couldn't even figure it out. <laughs> mm. I don't know, I just I, I don't like that mechanic of games. Not Good. Why is there a razor bow dropping on every single reset? The answer to that, Athos, is the fact that the game is has deterministic drops, and basically what we're doing is we're keeping all the variables exactly the same to force the drop to become the same exact thing over and over again, which in turn leads us to be able to test variables and see what what changing those variables does. So we're deliberately keeping the results the same so that we can then test variables. Right now I'm testing 1% magic find at a time. Uh, which is which is interesting. We're currently getting nowhere, but it's interesting. I am playing my single player grail currently. Mm -hmm. Started from the beginning. I deleted all my single player stuff, all of it, everything in my stash. Started over. That was pretty far too. In the last single, but I I started with a sort, so it was super easy. I didn't start with a Sork this time. But I got super lucky. Sork is is honestly just... Uh, I, when, I, when I used to play World of Tanks, I used to avoid playing Light Tanks because they were so fast. And because they were so fast, I would often like hold down the freaking gas pedal and just drive directly into danger. And... <laughs> And, and you know it's kind of the same way with sorceress. Like I mean, you, you can you can literally just hold down the teleport button and just teleport. You know? And but but it's also just really dangerous. I I mean I I've died so many times teleporting. Yep. Now I just get to go kill stuff. Looking for new stuff. I wish y'all would come back to the land of one life, late. <laughs> Why? Why? Because, you know, I'm, I'm lonely here. <laughs> lonely. Feeling so blue and lonely. Chaos TZ popped up and, like, no one joined. And Bob didn't show up. Uh, I got a 38 life buyer GST and a Sir Rune out of that. Why are you grumbling at me, Cody? Look at you, your whole shadow messes up the green screen as soon as you get nearby. Your big old fat dog shadow. You heard his feelings. <laughs> Hems deserves it. Hems a, him's a mean dog. He's a good boy. Hems a mean. Hems mean. He's got the mean spleen. Well, that's interesting. So at 320%, I got a blue as well. There's a very, it's it's really weird how like very specific percentages seems to upgrade the item. But another thing that I'm noticing, which is really quite strange, is that although very specific percentages are upgrading the item, it never goes to anything else other than like one item. Like I don't know if I if I can explain this properly. Like say you found a I don't know a white shaka, right? And you're like, oh, man, that could have been a Harlequin crest. And then, like, through my testing, I prove that it could only ever be a rare Harlequin crest, right? And and I, and doesn't matter how much magic find I add, doesn't matter what variables I change, it never turns into a unique, and it only turns into a rare. It doesn't turn into a blue. It doesn't turn into a set. It doesn't turn into a, you know, unique. It only turns into the rare, right? Well, 
it's it's that's what it seems to be at this point. Like in my testing, I'm I'm coming to the point where it's like once you get the magic find to do its job and upgrade the quality of the item at specific percentages, it only upgrades the item to exactly what it will always upgrade to, which is that specific upgrade and nothing else. So like with the man catcher, I could only ever get it to upgrade to a rare man catcher. It would never upgrade to the unique. And for this stupid uh, razor, bow, razor bow, I can only get it to upgrade to a blue. It never upgrades to anything other than a blue. And it's like the item when it drops must have like some sort of little checkbox that says can I be upgraded? Yes, no. And then it's like yes then upgrade to this and then it just has one item that it lets you upgrade it to or, or one quality rather. And it seems really weird. Um, almost as if the game has a static quality that any item can be upgraded to and doesn't let it upgrade to any other static quality. I mean, with this particular item, I should have at least seen a rare or um, or a unique at some point. I and mean, rip hook is not that is not that rare. I've seen like a thousand rip hooks as I've been leveling up. Um, I mean, I don't know if it can drop in this particular TC. Uh, let's see real quick. Let's uh, let's do a quick check just to make sure that we're not borking ourselves. But uh, let's go rip hook. Rip hook is apparently in the TC thirty three class. Um, and then we do area level. Um, and we find Bloodmore Nightmare, which is right here, 36. So yes, um, it should be able to drop rip, rip hook, no problem. The zombies are, are 36. They're three levels higher than the TC class that's required for rip hook. So they definitely will drop a rip hook if they can drop a rip hook. Oh yeah, let me change my magic find percentage again. Let's add another 1%. I'm kind of just going up by 1% right now because it's it seems to be interesting to see what the 1% changes make. And now we're back to a socketed bow. I'm kind of curious, like, is it the same percentage across the board for this particular monster, or... Because if I take this 1% back off, and I go back here and I kill this monster again, it's going to be the white razor, or it should be the blue razor hook again. Okay, so we got the razor bow. All right. I know how to get a, a breastplate. Let's see if we can force the breastplate to be blue as well. So, like, does this particular magic bind percentage, like, work for any drop that comes from that specific monster? Which I can do this, and then I can do this. And let's see. Okay, so that's, that's the one where we have no monster there. <laughs> Apparently I did something wrong. I don't know what he used to. It used to be the breastplate monster there, but something I'm doing changes it and it messes it up. Yeah, now he's not spawning there. How the hell do I get him to spawn back there again? God, gosh darn it! The fleeing zombie. He doesn't want to be. He doesn't want to be loved. Let's try dark wood and then Rogan Kama. Let's try a different set. I haven't done this one before, but let's see what's there. Hey, unique ring. Still nothing. Wisp projector. I can feel it in my bones. Twenty nine Nagel. It's terrible. Why would you do this to me? It's probably because you didn't let Kane identify. See, if you let Kane identify it, it would have been a wisp projector. 
<laughs> no, it probably would have been another dwarf star if Kane did about it. The dwarf, the dwarfiest of stars. Try cold plains and then stony field and then a rogue encampment. See if that makes us a gives us a different zombie pack. And then poo poo zombies don't don't love me anymore. The poopiest of zombies. Zombies. Oh, 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 zombies. Oh, 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 I'm just kind of curious, like, if I ran around with this particular percentage, which seems to be giving me the blue item, does, like, this particular percentage just have, like, a magic effect during this specific... Seed curve. I don't know. Oh, no, oh, dogs. Interesting to note, I just checked silo spin. It doesn't look like those zombies can drop the rip hook, at least according to that. Like the it's earliest locked. zone in Act One that can drop the rip hook is the barracks or the pits. TZ. I don't, I don't see why they wouldn't. I don't know. But I usually trust Silas Pen pretty well for a lot of that stuff. I used to trust Silas Pen as well. <laughs> used to. They've been lying to me after all these years. Lies. Stay a while and listen. Lies. Burp. They formed a union against me. That's rude. Tell them to stop forming unions against me. I need to be able to do my tests. You hear that? Ginger's anti-union. Anti-zombie union? Yes. <laughs> Zombies are not allowed to unionize. Get away, you evil dolls. Mm. It's unfortunate that it's a razor bone. Uh, the, the the monsters are further complicated by the fact that like literally the like uh, the path that you take to get there changes the monsters entirely. So I mean that's like a whole thing with them is that literally uh, unlike a lot of the clickables, which uh, some of the clickables do change depending on the path you use to get there, and some of them don't, which is actually kind of interesting. So like when you go to Lower Kurost and uh, you click on um, you, well, when you get to Lower Kuros, what you'll notice is there's always a skeleton right here, and there's always a corpse right here. But there's not always a second corpse in between the armor rack and the skeleton. And depending on how you do your pattern, um, it can add a corpse there. But some of the corpses are static, and some of them are uh, generic. Like, they, they, they change places. So, like, for instance, with this one, let me see if I can do it. It's in Nightmare Difficulty. I might be able to. Um, so we go to Travancore first, and then we go to Lower Kuros, and see how a, an additional corpse has been added here. So these two are still here. They haven't changed locations. But this corpse right here is a, is a variable. It changes just like the monsters do, depending on what pattern you use to get there. And the monsters are the same way, so depending on what pattern you use to get to the place changes the monsters and where they're spawning, which is interesting. Um, but with the monsters, the problem with this is, is that, well, once you start changing the variables to try and change what they drop, then the monsters change, and then, then you basically are getting different monsters, which potentially have different drops entirely. So you're not manipulating the same monster, you're manipulating the spawn, which is interesting. 
So it, it would be an interesting way to put this is that for monsters, your variables are changing the spawn location. I would assume it's a location. Um, not the monster drops, which is different than changing the monster. So like with the, with the chests and stuff like that, when you change the variables, you're deliberately changing the what drops from the chest, and the chest doesn't change. But with the monsters, you're not necessarily changing what the monsters are dropping. You're changing the monster itself. And it seems to be almost like it's a location, like a spawn location. So like you go out here into the, into the moor, and like there is just a spawn location that has like zombies in it. And this spawn location is like right here. And let's say it's like a circle. Say yay big, right? Well, it can spawn one, two, three, four. It can spawn like a, a pack. It could spawn like a champion or elites. Like it doesn't seem to matter like what spawns in this circle so much as there is a spawn circle that just simply seems to be here. And then whatever path you take, once you reach this place and the spawn circle is activated, it then uses the variables to spawn a set of monsters into the containing, like the shipment container, essentially, and it poops them onto the onto the battlefield. Like it's it's actually kind of interesting to think about it like that. Um, I mean, if I could, I could play around with it for a minute. I could like just change those zombies into whatever I wanted. Let's let's mess with it. So let's go to um, catacombs first. Then let's go to Inner Cloister. Then let's go to Black Marsh. Then let's go to Cold Plains. And then let's go to Rogue Encampment. And then let's go see what the zombies are now. Good day. It's a lot of variables, but. And so we still have nothing here. So the container is, is empty most of the time, it looks like. So the majority of the time we approach this container, it's going to be empty. Um, because we added a whole bunch of variables and it still ended up with nothing. Let's try a more interesting container. So um, we can play around with a monster that we know is always there. So let's play around with Eldritch as, a, as an example. So Eldritch is currently extra fast lightning enchanted. All right, so directly to Frigid. And he is extra fast lightning enchanted. Okay. So now let's add a variable. Let's see if we can change his extra fast lightning enchanted to something else. Because what the monster spawns with is also determined by, like, how you get there. So let's go to um, Ariat Plateau first. Go to Crystalline Passage. And then let's go to Frigid Highlands. Um, so what does Eldritch have now? Is he still extra fast lightning enchanted? No, nope. now he's extra fast teleportation. So see, you can even change the effects that the monster has depending on where you go. Um, you can change their name too, as long as they're not a super unique. Super uniques have set names, but um, regular monsters don't have set names. So it's a little bit more interesting that way. The uh, You can get like very specific names on monsters. So this time he's cursed. Well, the Fallen and Cold Plains would always be the same because it's the first variable that I get to. It's the first in the stack. Um, let me give you an example. So... Doo -doo -doo. So if I go directly to Cold Plains, there's the monsters and they're always going to be there. There's four Fallen, right? Um, but if I go somewhere else first before I go to Cold Plains, it gets a little bit... Uh, it gets a little bit more jankety. Let me let me try a couple variables here so we can play around with them. So if we go to like catacombs first, and then inner cloister, and then gold plains, uh, we got one, two, three. Oh, there you go. He came from like over there this time though. Like he was like spawned in a different place, but they're still all there. It's still the same four. They just have different locations. Let's try Darkwood, Black Marsh, 
Outer Cloister, and then Gold Blends. We only have three this time? We only, oh, no, wait, no, he's still coming from way over there. It's interesting, because we, we had four directly by the waypoint before, and now we got three, and the fourth one's, like, way over there somewhere. Like, out of the range of the waypoint, so we can't see him. It definitely is changing the spawn pattern a little bit, but it's not it's not drastic. Almost like that container is more static, I guess, set to be that way. What's really interesting about this is that um, this is kind of showing that unique items are still very difficult to manipulate, if that makes any sense. It doesn't seem like unique items are very easy to manipulate at all. Runes and stuff like that seem to be relatively easy to force to drop, and you could even potentially force like specific stats on an item, but it doesn't seem like uniques are easy at all to force to fall. Something seems to be very special when it comes to the uniques falling. Hmm. I wonder if the chest is affected by the monsters. So the chest dropped me crude greaves and a super mana potion. Let's try clicking on the chest without killing the monsters. So just as an uh, as a first example. So we're going to run by the monsters. Let's click on the chest. So still, oh no, we got cracked greaves, not crude greaves. It was crude before, right? Did uh, did killing the monsters change it to crude? Also, let's try it the other way as well. Let's see if the let's see if um Opening the chest changes the drops from the monsters. So yes, killing the monsters changed the clickable. Uh, let's see, I know I got the uh, clickables in here somewhere. Killing monsters changes the drops. All right, so let's try it the other way around. Let's open the chest first and then kill the, the zombies and see if opening the chest changes the drops that the zombies get. Uh, yes, it did. We changed to bolts and a kite shield. So we can add in here... Opening containers changes the drops of the monsters. That's right. Containers and juice. Juice and containers. What's wrong with juice and containers? He made a joke about saying Mephisto three times. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Mephisto, Mephisto, Mephisto. So now with loading that chest next to those zombies, so if you, say, loaded a different area first and then came to those zombies, there's a chance that chest might not be there, as you demonstrated with those corpses, correct? Mm, yes and no. It has to. We'd have to determine whether or not that chest is always there, and if it's always there, then it won't change. There, there do seem to be static props. I'll, I'll call them props. There's static props within an area, and then there's also props that seem to be generated by your pathway. So, like, with the case of Lower Kuros, the, some of the bodies were static and would never go away, and some of them weren't. So we'd have to figure out whether or not that body or that chest is static or not, and then if it's not static, like if it disappears, depending on if we go, like, a specific route... Um, then it's it's something else entirely. If it is a static chest, it's something that we can potentially use for testing. If we run straight there, it's definitely there. An interesting idea. 
I should get a Viking helmet. Won't you buy me one, Autocast? I'll wear it. Give me a Viking you got helmet. You got damaged greaves that time, but the past couple of times you were getting crude and cracked. Crude, cracked, damaged. Seems to be a pretty uh, solid string there. I have, quality, nonetheless. Uh, well, I have noticed that there's a, a, a very odd, I noted it when I was doing my previous testing, that sometimes like, like a cracked would upgrade to a crude. It was like some sort of odd anomaly that was inside the system, and I couldn't really pinpoint exactly what was causing it. It would never upgrade into a blue, for instance, but sometimes it would upgrade from like cracked to crude. Yeah, does it just roll a quality level and then pick a quality level of that... So if it's a low quality item, it'll just pick crack crude or damage. Well, it, so you know how like when you roll like a superior item, it has a specific percentage. Like we were checking that, and we would have like a superior item drop, and it would be the same percentage every single time. So I mean, it was it does seem to be the same quality crude like every single time. Well, there's but there's only one. I guess, I guess there's only one high quality item, right, Superior? Um. So, like, it, it can only roll Superior, and if it rolls Superior, it's going to roll the same. So that just rolls the same. But if you have a low quality item, there's three separate low quality items. So then it rolls to see which low quality item it's going to be. Crack, crude, or damaged. Well, when I was rolling the, uh, the Man Catcher, so when I tested the Man Catcher, it was the same exact quality or whatever, like cracked or whatever. It was always the same one. And then, like, randomly, like, one set of every, like, hundred tries, it would automatically upgrade to a crude. It was weird. This one seems to be acting differently. Like, let's let's test this one a couple of times. It does seem to be acting slightly anomalous. Anomalously. Alright, let's just run straight there. Clicky clicky, and we got cracked. Crap. I forgot I built this character before I stopped playing. So these are ten three durability. You found out Viking helmets are pretty expensive? I mean, <laughs> I mean, uh, yes. Yes, they are. Uh, yes. <laughs> Were you... I found out just now. Just... For, no, for no apparent reason that uh, Viking yes. helmets are just super expensive. I would I would imagine a good quality Viking helmet probably going to cost you like three, maybe maybe $400. I don't know. A cheaper, cheaper one, if you wanted to get, like, a dirt cheap model, probably somewhere around 100 at least. I don't know, it's been a while since I looked them up. I used to, I used to subscribe to this magazine, or, 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 I didn't subscribe to it, I bought something from them once, and then they sent me magazines for, like, forever, hoping that I would buy something else. It was called Museum uh, Replicas. Uh, I bet you they probably got some, some Viking helmets in here, let's see. Let's go to Museum Reclipicalizes. Uh, shop by theme, shop by product type. Uh, armor, um, helmets, and arming caps. Uh, a barboot. Crusader helmets. Uh, Norseman helmet. That's a pretty good Viking helmet. That's I, I think that's a pretty decent one. Yeah, one hundred and seventy-nine dollars and ninety-five cents. Yeah, so you could you could do four easy payments of forty-four ninety-nine. You know, no big deal. Nice it's little. not a Viking helmet unless it has the horns. It's got the Celtic on the side, and it's got the, it's got the, it's got that's totally a Viking helmet. You shush. <laughs> this lavish helmet would be perfect for a Viking chieftain. Thank you very much. A chieftain, not just a peasant knight. No, no, no. A chieftain. Peasant. It's for the peasants. Yeah, 
You want an Iron Man helmet that splits itself open? Well, now you're getting into the thousands. And it changes the drops. I'm actually inter oh look, it's a blade bow this time. Hmm. That's interesting. Blade bow, blade bow is just one. It's just one tier higher. Like that's just that's just that's just the one tier higher over the one that I was previously getting. Does the number of attacks it takes to kill the monster affect the drops? I don't think so. I don't. I wouldn't think so. <coughs> well, dang! All right, just cough right in my ear then. I just died, guys. I'm sorry. Just, just don't, don't die in people's ears. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Just actually curl up right next to them and just die directly into their ear. No, just right on top of them. That's the way. That's actually the way you're supposed to do it. Make sure your last breath is right in their ear. <laughs> is it blue razor blow? Okay, so I'm back in nightmare again. That's right. And uh, chaining together multiple events too it seems to be doable. Like you can straight up just like choose which monsters as long as it's not too chaotic. Hmm. I'm trying to think where to go from here and what to check, but uh, I mean we could start checking out like the individual magic find percentages, which is something I wanted to test out. But I'm starting to get the hunch that I don't think it matters. Like I, I feel like. It's going to be the same result no matter what. I think we're going to run into this this scenario, which is it's either going to be crap or it's going to be the blue. So it's going to be either the cracked or the blue, and it's going to keep going back and forth between cracked and blue, cracked and blue, cracked and blue, and it's never going to stop. Um, I think the only way to, to potentially get a unique item is to find a monster that maybe has a potential unique item drop. This this brings about an interesting theory, and it's it's um. What you should do is clear until you find a unique item, right? Well, the then... problem is, how is he going to replicate that? Well, yeah, I can't replicate it, unfortunately. I mean, the general start of the test was to come up with the idea of, okay, well, does Magic Find actually change the quality of the item? And, I mean, I have to say that it's a really weird answer. I, th I think if I had to just tell somebody an answer and they're like, tell me yes or no, I would have to say that no, Magic Find does not change the quality of the item. Um, but then, at the same time, I would have to put a caveat of, well, if you have the correct percentage the exact percentage required, then yes, it will change the quality of the item, but only if you have literally the exact percentage required. Like, what does it take to turn that item into a unique? Well, it takes 392%, exactly. Do you have 392%? Oh, you only have 393? Oh, that's too bad. You win over. You lose. Choo lose. And, um, and that seems to be what we've learned so far, is that it's like... It's like Magic Find doesn't have much of an effect at all, other than if it has an effect, it always has an effect. It's, it's stupid. But then it's the variable of the exact path you take, the exact number of chunks you load, the exact monsters you kill, and... And the number order. of items you have in your inventory. Yeah. <laughs> it truly is an impressive system. <laughs> What's the matter, Boobus? You gotta go pepper doodles. I'm not sure what he just <laughs> He just he just sauntered off. I asked him if he had to go to the bathroom and he just sauntered off. Oh. You want to go get your pillums? Give me your pillums. Let me see. Well fine, don't let me see your pillums then. Third face. Bull unique bull rock blade. That's what I get. Hmm. Yay, mind below.
Hmm. How can we apply this to Battle.net? I've already been trying to come up with some potential answer to that. Lots and lots and lots of data. <laughs> Does your magic find change anything through player count? Um, I mean, currently we have a magic find percentage, which causes it to drop a blue bow. I mean, I guess I could change the player count, kill the same monster, see if this monster drops a different item, and whether or not the different item is blue. I, think I mean, if it's any, this whole time. if it's anything like super chests, um, it was at, it was seven and eight, five and six, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. was a uh, pathetic ex uh, excuse for a, an attempt. Okay, so changing to P7 didn't have an effect, which I didn't think it would. Changing to P6 probably will, because that was, in my testing with the super chests, 5 and 6 were tied together. So changing it to pay P6 immediately changed it to a quab and bolts. So we got a quab now. So it changed the items entirely. Interesting. Yeah, from, from what we tested before with the super chests, um, and this is an interesting one that can be added into anyone's repertoire of knowledge, is that um, is that players 1 and 2, 3 and 4, 5 and 6, 7 and 8, are each individually their own sets, and each set changes the drops completely. I don't mean just like moves it slightly up or down or something like that, or is close to the original value. No, it seems to just completely throw everything for a loop, and it just completely changes all the drops entirely. It's not. It's not what we originally thought. We originally thought that like players one and two was just less no drop rolls, or players three and four was just, you know. Less no drop rolls, etc., going up the list all the way until you got to player seven, which was the least number of no drop rolls. No, it it straight up changes all of the drops entirely that fall from the monsters, the chests, everything. When you shift from two to three, and when you shift from four to five, and when you shift from six to seven, that it literally is like a direct change to all the drops. So it's not like the monster is still dropping me, say, a razor bow. He's not dropping me a razor bow anymore. He drops me the the quab and the bolts. Actually, he dropped me arrows this time. I wonder if arrows and bolts are just interchangeable in the in the logic for the game. Have I ever tried to do speed runs for Diablo 2? Not really my bag, AutoCast self. Not really a big speed run community person. So bolts quab if I kill the left one first and then the right one. If I kill the right one first, does it go to arrows? Is that how I'm getting the arrows? That seems to be it. So I killed the right one first and then the left one, and this time I got bolts. Mm -hmm. So we try the left one and then the right one again, just to be sure. I think bolts and arrows are just interchangeable is all it is. Not really too... Interesting. Not, not really too much of a, a big bit of information there, but... It's giving you bolts more often than arrows. Oh yeah, Cooley made a video on uh, like oh, clearing, that was crazy. clearing Uber Tristram. Uh, yeah, so sub that. two minutes for a barbarian. That's impressive. Oh, absolutely. I saw that title. I'm like, okay, Cooley, you got me. I'm going to click on it. <laughs> yeah, I already watched it. Let's bring it down to five. I'm just going to do all this testing real quick just to be sure. 
Cooley is a barb master. Wait, you're saying he's the master barber? Yes, that's what I said. Him and his no hair. <laughs> How do you think he learned? Uh, why? What is, what is with all the Diablo? Had a hair. How, come they, how come they all have no hair? Like, what is this? I'm not going to lose my hair, am I? I don't want to join the no hair club. <laughs> I don't want to join the no hair club. Right, Coolies one... Barb was also min max to all get out, so take that into consideration too. Oh yeah, I mean he was talking about some like super min max weapon at the end and Oh yeah, like a minute and thirty seconds with like that ridiculous rare phase blade. Ridiculous? You mean unobtainable? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty... Un unobtainium. <laughs> What is this, the core? Come on down to Unobtainium Town for me. Is this the movie The Core? Is that where we're going with this? Avatar. Its real name is 37 syllables long. <laughs> What's a perfect wise and draw? 30%? 30, 35. 35. 35. It's 20, isn't it 20 to 35 range? Yeah, Wizard Draw is one of those items that uh, it's such a low-level item and it drops all the time, but most of the time it's garbage. But if you do get a 35, 35s are actually worth money. Like, the, I, I would I would pay a decent amount for a 35 if I was running a Freezing Era, though. It's, I mean, it's literally best in slot, so. Especially if it had a good damage roll on it, too, because it doesn't, it doesn't really have the best damage roll, and it's nice to have a little bit of physical damage on that. I think it, I think it's just a ten percent uh, roll from like seventy to eighty or something. So like an, I think it's an eighty percent with thirty five percent is a, like a perfect wizard draw. All right, Cody, you gotta go Pepadutas. Okay, come on. I'll take you out to go Pepadutas. Come on, Cody the Peppa Peppadu monster. I'll be back in like an hour, guys. If you're still on. All right. Just need to get to 93 so I can use all these amethysts. I see Silva, that's why his that's why his goatee is so red because he keeps picking at it. <laughs> He's not a real ginger. All right, I'm back. Cody the Mossum Dog.
I'm gonna have a hole in my chin. I do have a hole in my chin. That's the whole problem. No, I think it's like sometimes when you get a beard and you get your beard running and it's nice and thick, you don't really you can't really see your skin underneath. So it's probably just like a pimple or something underneath of there that just got popped by accident. You can't really see under your beard, so sometimes when it gets like that, I shave off my whole beard and then I just I make sure I get my feel face all nice and clean and and you know self care maintenance. I told uh, him that's why your beard's actually red because you keep picking at it. And it yeah, colored with the blood of my enemies. Mm -hmm. The blood of all my enemies. Um. Mm. Okay, yeah, we were testing that. That's right. What are we currently on? Four. All right, let's change that to three. I just want to verify these results real quick. I feel like uh, with all this information, I could make like a advanced how does magic find work video that's so advanced nobody will understand it. <laughs> how does magic find really work? Like, well... <laughs> Sit down, my friend, and then I pull out an apple and a knife, and I start cutting it and eating it straight off the knife. And then I tell you all about it. What's that movie where the guy, whenever he tells the story, he always breaks out an apple and starts eating it? It's, a, it's like a running meme for the story. I'm sure somebody will remember. I have no idea. It's been two hours. What kind of progress are we making? You expect progress in two hours? Come back in two years. Then we'll have some progress. Two years later. Looks like players one through four was exactly the same. Well, there was a bunch of Ooh, oh yeah. there was a bunch of no drops, so we don't really know. The no drops seem to go up significantly when you get to um the lower player counts, which makes it like garbage. And it seems like it no drops every time you shatter the corpse too. Uh -uh, I was shattering the corpse earlier, and it was still giving me do janks. And I was getting the bow. Besides, shattering the corpses means you get to search their insides. And see if Kubis ate another tin can. Kubis, did you eat a tin can? Would you like Kubis some of this? Mo the monster goat? Look at this. Look, 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 look. As, soon as, I, as soon as I crinkle a wrapper, he shows up. It's like like a fat kid running for, for dinner. Fat kid. Just because I crinkled a wrapper doesn't mean you get to run over here and try and steal it from my hands. fat kid and you're not even fat you're just the fat kid that always runs for the food he'll be in the other room like eight miles away and I'll, I'll just like just barely and he just what you got what you got oh they tried so hard who tried so hard these boots Ten faster run walk, and then trial res. Forty cold, twenty fire, and then poison. Fourteen. They tried. They they certainly did. And beating up the dog. Gotta check his durability. Is he an ethereal dog? He's got durability problems. <laughs> He's just waiting for snacks. He said, you gonna open it or no? 
He said, I heard you crinkle it, but you didn't open it. And since you didn't open it, I can't beg for none. So I need you to go ahead and open that so I can beg for some. <laughs> he said, boy, he said, don't tease me. You're going to your, get your nose bit off. There, have some. There, has another one there. Fine, jeez. Take them. Take them. Here, look. It's all crunchy. The little pieces. There you go. Here, little, another little piece. Hope it gets stuck in your jowls. <laughs> Why don't you go say hi to the chinchies or something? Quit, quit hounding me. For every scrap of morsel I got. Hounding. He told me that you starve him. Oh yeah, starve him all day long with a twenty-four hour buffet. Twenty-four hour buffet. He said he this guy doesn't ever feed me. He eats beef jerkums in front of me. Uh huh, beef jerkums. Nothing. That's right. We don't give him nothing. <laughs> all the beef jerkums. Let's try all the magic finals. So. All the magic fun in the freaking world. All the magic fun. How much I got? 554. That's not a lot. Where's my 150 fast? 150 fast. Get the 150 fast. What, Pona? My All right, we got 1,451% match. All right, let's try this again. I starve him 23 hours and 55 minutes, Buffet. Hmm. Well, I bet he could eat a lot in five minutes. <laughs> I mean, you ain't lying. Especially when they don't <laughs> swallow it. You ain't lying. There ain't a lot of lying. Going on around the town is gonna come back to town. Make the light bright paladin. Light bright paladin. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That sounds like fun. I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> I don't know I don't know what don't know what to say to that at all. All the colors. <clears throat> so far, I, I swear that I, I feel like Magic Find is not doing anything at all. And it almost feels as though... I don't, I, don't, I don't know if this is the case, but it almost feels as though, like, if a unique item is going to drop, it's going to drop no matter what. And in the odd chance that you have an item that drops that's not a unique item or a rare or a set and it can actually be affected by magic fine it seems to be directly related to having the correct percentage to force it to turn into its upper quality and the upper quality seems to be locked in one particular quality so it will never go up to like any quality it always goes up to a set quality, which could just be 
um, kind of like a reverse logic, which is where the game like pre-rolls what the quality is for that particular item, and it succeeds on one particular quality and nothing else. And then every single time it rolls that item, it always is going to that quality and nothing else. Which means that Magic Find might not have as much of an effect as we think. Because Magic Find's not rolling unique, set, rare, magic, etc. It's actually just rolling between, like, two variables back and forth. So, like, maybe it's a magic item and it can potentially be unique if you have enough Magic Find or the right percentage. And so then the Magic Find can become unique if you have the Magic Find for it. But... If the item was going to roll unique anyway, your magic find did nothing. If the item was going to roll set anyway, your magic find did nothing. It, it, it almost seems as though, like, there's a a guaranteed, like, drop, which even if you had 0% magic find would happen anyway. And then there's a drop that can potentially be altered into an upper class, but you don't know what that upper quality even is that it can potentially be upgraded into. So... I don't know, like like when we would say all the time that, you know, like a, a sh white Chaco could potentially be a unique Chaco. I can't even say that's the case anymore. I feel like we might be running into a, a situation where maybe the unique, maybe the white Chaco could never be a unique Chaco because it could never roll that quality. It would always have rolled like a rare or um, a magic or something, even if it did upgrade. I don't know. Hmm. I know in my experience online, some of the best unique items I've gotten are on characters with low or no magic find. <coughs> Overburdened. Yep, M.A. Uh, one prior ladder season, I got a Wind Force and a Shaco with basically zero magic find. <coughs> sh -sh 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 Shaco. A lot of my characters run 0% magic find, too. I'll set up a lot of really weird builds, and there's really not a lot of good ways to put in Magic Find without, like, severely stunting the characters. It's because I like to make weird builds. And, um, I've also noticed that a lot of my characters with weird builds will find, like, massive amounts of items. I think my God Zealer, if I remember correctly, he found, like, three Shacos that season. Which I couldn't figure out why, because he had, like, no Magic Find. It was, like, 50% Magic Find, if that. 
it was preparing him for the murder of those quill rats were gonna lay on him in the first terror zone. <laughs> I was wearing a dream helmet, I couldn't put them on. That was the first season for that. I think you were 98 when that happened. Honestly, I know that Silos Pen's drop calculations are determined from some sort of reverse engineering from the game code, but I mean, at some point or another, I feel like Silos Pen's calculations can't be correct, given the fact that we now know that the drops are deterministic, which means that they must have been extrapolating from the data that it was random chances by simply saying, like, you know, maybe they discovered that there was a, a a drop table, right? And then on this drop table, you had, like, maybe, like, a 1,000 entries or, like, 3,000 entries or 5,000 entries or whatever, right? And then they were like, well, it's, like, a 1 in 5,000 chance because there's, like, 5,000 entries on the table. But I don't necessarily think that that particular view of how the drops work is technically correct because it seems to be more deterministic which is that even if you killed the monster 5,000 times there's no guarantee that you're going to get the item you could kill him 10,000 times and there's no guarantee you could get the item or you could kill him 10 times and get the item 5 like 5 of those 10 times It's it really comes down to more of a like how did you get there to the monster like what path did you take it almost seems like Silo's pen would be better off, like, almost giving you drop calculations depending on the path that you take to get to the boss, rather than what the boss actually drops. Like, instead of just saying, you know, this is like a 1 in 5,000 chance from this boss, they could be like, well, you know, if you went directly to this boss, then, you know, the chances of you getting this are this, and if you go, like kill Pindle first and then go here, then the chances are this and so forth and so on. Because the chances change dramatically depending on what you do first before you go to that particular boss. I don't know, it's crazy. There's a lot of stuff to consider here. And I'm not entirely sure that... Um, I'm not entirely sure that... Um, the information is leading us somewhere... Overly useful. I mean, at least we know now that um, one of the biggest takeaways, at least we know that the, doing the same thing repeatedly over and over again can potentially lead you to a bad result. Like, you know how sometimes people will come in and they'll be like, Oh my god, I ran a Dario like 5,000 times and she still won't give me a soge. I mean, now we know for a fact that, well, maybe it was just the way that you were running in Dario. Maybe you needed to change things up a little bit and you never did. You know, maybe you were just doing it the same exact way every single time. Never changing anything up, always going the same direction. You know, maybe it was an offline single player where the seed code doesn't change also, which means there was even less variables involved. Um, so you ended up with a crap result because the way that you were doing it was crap. So, I don't know. It's like people that do Countess runs and they'll say they get better drops when they walk and kill everything along the way. Than if they just teleport straight to the countess and kill it. I mean, and we know for a fact that that's true. So, like I just attested earlier, the order in which you kill the monsters changes the results. So, yeah.
Oh, you know, destination. Just testing this, that, and the other thing. Testing everything. Think I'm up online for a little while. I can't think of anything more to test, so. Twenty-two million what? XP. Just still a level. I made this character after like all y'all quit playing. I didn't quit. Dragons. I went to Dragon's Dogma for a little while because that was that yeah. came out. I like Dragon's Dogma though. Hell divers. Did you? Yeah, you did mm. Hell divers. No, I didn't Dragon's do. Stuff. I didn't do Hell divers. Oh, I thought you did. I kind of. I do want to give Hell divers a try, but. I can't. I don't know. I don't know. Ooh, -hoo. Bob Socket and Berserker X. Nice. I can't. Tell you. What's up, Destination? Who deleted somebody's message? Yeah, I did a bunch of tests on Deform. I tell you, that Firebolt build was really fun. Afternoon. I know people are, like, hyped up about the uh, the Frozen Orb build, but... Man, that Firebolt build is, is something else. If you want a fun build for, uh, for Season... Four of Diablo Four. There's something special, magical about that Firebolt build. Just the way that it functions. It's um, I don't know. It's a very fun mini game. I rather did enjoy it. Hello. Can you do unlimited burrs with Lord of Destruction like you did with D2R? I don't see why not. We could always give it a try. Let's pull up the old the old classic version of the game. <coughs> so first thing we gotta do is we gotta input the seed command. So let's give it a try. Now, inputting the seed command in the old version of the game is a little bit more difficult. You have to put it into the uh, shortcut. So you have to actually open up the shortcut to the game. Um, and you got to go into the properties. And you got to type it in here. I don't even know if I have any characters over there that can do anything, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> Um, most of my characters that I have over here are characters that I, like, did for theory crafting, but I never actually created them. Like, they're just, they're blank slates. Um. That chunk, mm, that five socket axe is probably worth a little bit. I'm, mm, I'm looking, what's the best thing to make that in? A death? Yeah, a that death. That's death really all you can make it in. Eternity. And uh, nobody makes eternity. Yeah, uh, that's like the only two that are indestructible. And I would never, I mean, I know a lot of y'all do them, but I've never made a, a death in an X. Oh, well, I mean, I've 
used Death and Adnax, and I've never liked it. But I've always can't... preferred Berserker X. She can't even go to hell. <laughs> Easier to hit the IS breakpoint. Unable to enter. Bad character version. Wow. Okay, here we go. This will work. I never got to playing this season, but if I was going to, I was going to do a a two hand druid, and I was going to do a death in a um, like a silver edge axe or something. I did a Hello. You have Ed a decapitator death last season on a druid, fury druid. <laughs> Very fun. Ideally, when I made that Fury Druid, I wanted the weapon that I found and then had Ginger roll on stream. Oh, wait, hold on, I got it. Hey. There was that Eth Breath of the I Dying can... Archon staff. I gotta change the player count, that's what it is. I gotta change the player count. Okay, let's try this again. You guys are asking me a question. I gotta. It's a little bit more difficult on here, but it's. Uh, but it's. I think it's doable. Hold on. I just gotta type in slash players seven. There you go. Players set to seven. There we go. Now it should work. Oh, we got Hellspawn Skull. Hmm. Didn't get the amulet either. May not work. Hellspawn Skull is close, but it's it's not quite. I'm not fast enough, I think. I need to be faster. Let's throw the Enigma on so we can run faster. You have to do that player's command every time you join the uh, game. For this particular yep. ex, uh, well, exploit, yeah. For this particular exploit, yeah. It doesn't gotta... save it like it does in D2R. No, it's that was a feature that was added in D2R. Gotcha. So if you tried this in the original version of the game, you would have to, uh, you would have to repeat those steps over and over again. I still type it in D2R. <laughs> Just out of habit. I mean, yeah, you can type it in Detour as well. I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing wrong to... Uh... Mm -hmm. We're doing something wrong. I'm, I'm just slightly off, like, run walk speed-wise. Butabablo? What? Butabablo? Where's a Butabablo? Your mom's a Bablo? Cody's always got his nose in something. What are you sniffing over there, you little turd? A turd. He probably is sniffing a turd. <laughs> oh, that Oculus. You just thought he was going to get his pillows earlier. He was getting yours. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong, but it definitely doesn't seem to be working in the original version. I mean, I'm sure with a little bit of effort, you could probably make it work.
Cody, why you mess up with the chinchies? <laughs> they come right up to the bars and they let them. They let them lick them. Are they tasty? Do the chinchillas taste good? Mm -hmm. Too bad you can't eat them. Ha! Huh. Not allowed. He said, "Oh shucks." I said, I'll just wait till you're not looking. Good day. <coughs> Let's go back to my ridiculous fire goal. Level 49 fire goal. I almost had. I almost had a perfect fire goal, but not quite. Almost, but no cigar. I needed two more levels on the fire goal. How do you get two more levels? What are you missing? Uh, the plus six um, head. I need the plus six head. Ow! I've already got a plus six wand. Time to kill the Muffin Man. The Muffin Man, the Muffin Man, who lives so what, on you need three to three to summoning skills, three to fire golem mm -hmm, offhand. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Something very similar to what I have in my main hand, just in the offhand. And I typically pick up like rare necro heads. This is this is my beautiful wand. You see my beautiful wand? I don't have your stream up right now. I'm gonna link it for you. Cause I figured you did. <laughs> yeah, this is my beautiful do right here. Boop. Mm -hmm. So beautiful. I need one. I need a. I need a, a necro head to like that. That's I don't know where you put it. In D two R ladder chap. Where else would I put it? I don't see. Oh, there it is. I had to scroll down. Scrolly oly oly. Scrolly oly moly. Scrolly moly moly. Scrolly oly poly. Ugh. Juicy jowls? Get your juicy, get your juicy jowls off me. Go. Them things is grody. You better grotaculous. You better get out of here, grotaculi boy. That's grotaculous. That's what that is. Back it up. Go over there drinking a bunch of water and then come over here and rub it on me. Like I'm your towel. Go rub it on the chinchies. How about that? Doggy always go. being a stinker? When is he not a stinker? That's the question. You've got a couple 11 lightning resist small charms. I don't know exactly. Whatever I say, a couple of items. Does the Necro have a head rack? Hmm. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe we do, maybe we don't. Maybe we don't want to talk about 
Maybe our head rack is personal. You shouldn't be asking what our business is. Getting all up in our business. All up in our business. Mm. I doubt it, bro. With that legend sword. So any of you guys watch the uh, Fallout series? <laughs> the TV I haven't show. watched any of it yet. It's pretty good. I like that. Is it on Prime? Or? Yeah, it's on Prime. I think they did a really good job. You know, kind of like gathering the vibe of a Fallout game. I feel like they did a good I job. I remember seeing the ads for it. I oh, it's definitely it's interesting. Oh, it's interesting. I haven't really been on it. It's so interesting, even a caveman would watch it. Now, we were talking about it the other day, and we were trying to figure out, like, what it was set in. Like, if it would be set in, like, Fallout 3 or Fallout 4 New Vegas, or whether it would be set in, like, Fallout 1 or 2, or, or whether it would be, like, some new story entirely. And the survey is basically that it's, like, well, New Vegas is, is outright. Apparently, New Vegas isn't considered canon. And according to um, quite a few of the people involved in the Fallout thing, Apparently, the new Fallout TV show is considered canon, so... Um, which basically means they weren't going to use the Fallout New Vegas anyway, because it was a non-canon game. And then, um... Apparently, they're kind of going off of, like, Fallout 1 and 2 a little bit. Which is, Fallout 1 and 2 took place in California. Um, Fallout New Vegas kind of, like, boosted off of the Fallout. Uh, one and two stories. So it was kind of like uh, utilizing those stories to kind of prop itself up. So even though it's not based on New Vegas, it still kind of has like the New Vegas vibe because it is based on the same thing that New Vegas was based on, which is neat. But it doesn't really have like, uh, that's not, like if you played New Vegas, it's not going to, it's not going to have all the same storyline elements and things that New Vegas did. Impossible. Impossible. I don't know. Overall, though, I mean, without spoiling anything, I do feel like they, um... They nailed the the bolts very well. Um, they nailed the um, like overworld very well. Uh, I feel like they did a really good job on uh, the ghouls and um, I mean just in general like pretty much everything to be honest. Like it, it, it down to the artwork, um, the music. Like they got a lot of the songs in there that you'll. You'll remember, you know, like, the, you can't, probably can't sing any of them on stream because they're all copyrighted, but. I freaking love those songs, though. Like, Stars of the Midnight Ranger. <laughs> Making gingers cry. <laughs> <laughs> now they usually start out the episodes with like one song and then um, they usually end the episodes with one song and then on top of that they also have like during the show there's also a couple songs so it's, it's pretty neat 
they, they really do kind of like grab the vibe of the uh, the Fallout experience. Uh, I feel like they also did a really good job making the uh, Pip Boys feel useful. You know, sometimes you like you look at devices like that, and you're like, what actual use are they? Like, you know, like in an apocalyptic world, like what are they? What are they actually good for? Like, couldn't they get by without it just fine? And uh, and I feel like they did do a pretty good job, kind of like selling the point of you know that the Pip Boys were actually useful and not just like toys, essentially that were being used by rich people or whatever. Did a pretty good job with that. I like the characters too. I thought all the characters were pretty good that they added into the show. Don't say that, Charles. You're scaring me. That's how you scare somebody. That is how you scare. With extreme fear prejudice. Prejudice fear. Fear to fridge. Glad I could be of assistance, BH. Summoning all the monster from the dude. You know, I kind of wish they'd let you do in Diablo 4. Is, like, give you a way to telly stomp your, your minions. It doesn't even have to literally let you telly. I think that would be fine if they just have, like, a button that you could press. That would just, like, cause all your minions to, like, gather up on one monster. Yeah. The, um... I mean, the side effect of that is obviously that you're now you're extremely vulnerable because all of your defenses have now been... You know, summoned into one spot, which is a lot. Still, you can actually drop all your DPS though, where you yeah. want it, and not hope that it goes where you want it to. I, it kind of seems like magic finding this game. It does. It kind of seems like it is. Especially when you consider the fact that my paladin was used, having no magic find whatsoever, and I found a... <laughs> didn't I find a wind force this season? And, um... I, had a, I, found a, I found a bunch of really good items this season. I mean, I know magic find doesn't affect charms, but I also found that frickin' ridiculous charm as well. My precious over here. I'm about to go log back into my pallet and just like get cuddle with it. Chunks just wishes he could cuddle with it. He does. Only whenever it goes to Nama. He wants to cuddle with it. He told me. It would serve me no purpose right now. Except for to cuddle with it. Obviously. No, I would just look at it and then be very impatient when the season was going to until I could put it on the blue battle. Finally use your King's Grace Crystal Sword. Nice, Rosie. Grants. Sounds like you're chugging along just fine. Just chugging along. I love that song, by the way. Probably also copyrighted it and probably also shouldn't sing it. Cool 
clearly that guy doesn't know what a vodka bullet is. Oh, did you see how, like, ridiculously they nerfed Hoda? No. They just took away the, you know, the, you know the multiplier that gives you, like, a, like, you know, X percent for the amount of resource you have upon using the ability or whatever? They just took that away entirely. Like, you don't even, you don't even get that anymore. It's, that'll do it. <laughs> that'll do it. <laughs> I mean, that's they just completely took. Oh, and they also nerfed the overpower, and they nerfed Banish Lord's talent, and they well, nerfed, I mean, the and, they nerfed to be and they nerfed to Bolt's will. So, like pretty much everything I think that was that the overpower barbarians were using to hit those crazy numbers, they took away. Overpower however, to be took down. however, despite the fact that they they, they nerfed your overpower and your um, you know your, your your Hoda, they also, however, gave you tornadoes the size of the entire screen that block everyone's vision and pretty much just one shot everything. So. I'm sorry, dust devils. I hate how the ghosts every time you teleport, they always gotta like spread out. You ever notice that? Like when you're playing the Summon Necromancer, the ghosts never want to stay put whenever you teleport. They always gotta like fan out, and then after they fan out, then they'll do their own job. But they're not gonna let you teleport them onto anything because they're really Steve Brule? Who's Dr. Steve Brule? Who is this Brule? What does he do? Who is your doctor and what does he do? They have to engage their special formation. That's right. Fighting evil by moonlight. Winning love by daylight. Burning gingers with a real bright. They are the ones named Sailor Moon. We should just make it and turn into a ginger song. Burning gingers by moonlight. Burning gingers by daylight. Burning gingers in the snow light. We are the ones who burn the gingers. Yes, yes, MA. MA 163, yes. Yes. That way I could just buy all the 7% MF charm myself. <laughs> See, you didn't think that I had a long con, but I've got a long con, my friends. Welcome to the long con. We got lots of memes. We gonna take them all down, take them down in teams. Cause it's a long con. Yeah, this is a TV show I used to love watching, and uh, I watched it all, and so uh, I think I've seen it all like three times, so I guess I'm just never going to watch it again. It's called The Rockford Files, if you guys have never seen The Rockford Files. I freaking love that show. I don't really, I'm not really sure how to explain The Rockford Files to somebody who's never seen The Rockford Files, but... 
Let me let me try. Let me try. Maybe I can get some of you guys to watch it, and then we can talk about funny stuff that happened within the show. So, The Rockford Files is about a guy who basically gets accused of committing a crime, um, and he gets imprisoned. So he goes to jail. Um, he's innocent, of course. This is this is the truth. He's he's innocent. He didn't do anything wrong. Uh, they put him in jail by mistake, you know, yada, yada, yada. Some new evidence comes to light, and when the new evidence comes to light, he is pardoned. Um, however, due to the way that uh, the penal system works, and also, like, society in general, despite the fact that he was pardoned, nobody will give him a job anymore. Um, he's essentially seen as a prisoner, or, a, uh, or what's what's the term for somebody who's gotten out of prison, who is trying to apply for a job? It's uh, yeah. uh, what's what's the term they use? Why can I not remember it? No, I don't even remember. Um, it's not felon, but felon could be close. But anyway, so anyway, he's he, he can't really do anything, right? So he's. So he's he every time he applies for jobs, he's he's currently, you know, just kind of screwed, even though he's been pardoned by the governor. So he got an official pardon by the governor. He has it like printed out a certificate and everything. And he shows it to them and they still don't believe him. Right. So he basically becomes a detective. Um, and uh, he's he's like a very odd detective because he went to jail for such a long time. And when he was in jail, he learned a ex-con. That's a good that's a good term. They all they still think he's an ex-con, even though he got a pardon. So. When he was in jail, he learned a whole lot of, you know, con artist tricks from the people who were in jail. And he basically uses those con artist tricks that he learned in jail to, you know, basically, like, get one over on the criminals, essentially, right? And uh, so the whole show is basically around him being a detective. Everybody still thinks he's a con the entire time. And um, he's basically using his... You know, like stuff that they knowledge that he learned, secret, secret con artist tricks to uh, to get the con, you know, to, to get the cons. And like, it's always terrible. Like the entire show is just awful because he's constantly dealing with convicts. And uh, there's so many funny episodes in there, too. Like like this one um, con artist group was conning a bunch of people out of money on like a timeshare. And it turned out the timeshare didn't even include the ability to actually go to the timeshare it was got to got to be the weirdest timeshare ever like they birched, they basically purchased uh, mineral rights is what they purchased not they didn't actually purchase rights to the timeshare they purchased the mineral rights to the timeshare and they weren't actually allowed to to go to the timeshare and spend time in the timeshare it was the silliest thing ever so Rockford comes up with a con. It's like a it's like a con basically, uh, to trick the con artists into giving them their money back by taking the mineral rights and setting up an oil derrick on the frickin' property, like right in the middle of the hotel. <laughs> and he is he makes sure that he's as loud as possible. The jackhammers running like nonstop, and he's conning the con artists. And literally the whole time, like he's just making as much racket as he can. They're not actually setting up the door, you know, the oil derrick, but but they have it up anyway, and it's making a freaking racket, and literally forces them to like pay them off to get off the property, and then gives the money back to all the people that basically owed the money to. It's the the whole thing is hilarious. I freaking love that show. I'm gonna go go cuddle my my charm. My beautiful job. I love you, my job. Bum, 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 bum. Beep, 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 beep. Yes, Kuba, Sabuba, some awesome dog. Do you have. An alum gator. Where is your alum gator? Where is your gator alum? Oh yeah, there was a lot of really good episodes on uh, 
on Rockford Falls. Good morning. I see that gator. Give me this gator. This is my gatums, and him's gonna be mine. And I'm gonna play with him. I'm gonna hug him, and I'm gonna squeeze him, and I'm gonna call him George. And him's gonna be my best friend. <laughs> go on, get your alligator. Go. Why you gotta come up here and tease? Why? What you want? We, no, you won't. No lickings. No lickings. No lickings. No lickings. Keep your tongue in your face. Keep your tongue in your pie hole. Tongue in your pie hole. He said, he said, pie hole. Do you got any pie? <laughs> Look at you. Look at you. Look real quick, too, when I said pie. Fatty. Fat kid. Pie. Snacks. Pop pep. Beef jerkums, pepperonis, uh, crackums, chickens, um, porks, porkum twists, uh, <laughs> beef jerkums times two, bones. Chips, cookies. I'm going to say all your words. Alligator. Ball. Taco. Oh, you oh, you look for the taco, too. <laughs> he said, wait a minute. You said, got some tacos? He said, I do like some tacos now. He said, what about them tacos? He said, what kind of tacos you got? You got some burritos? How about burritos? You like burritos or just tacos? Tacos or burritos? How about nachos? Want some nachos? How about some cheese? Want some cheese? <laughs> you want some cheese? Why are you looking at my shirt? You getting so hungry that my shirt is delicious now? I ain't got a delicious shirt. That's not that's not that's not a delicious shirt. There's no there's no food on there. Forgive me. <laughs> he pressed that button too. Fatty. Why are you still laying on my keyboard? Eating all the snacks up. Never gonna stop, no. Gobble them all up now. I am the one named Kubas Abubas. <clears throat> 30 socket superior legendary mallet. Useful for anything? Black. Some people like to make it in a legendary mallet. Cause, uh, get out. Because legendary mallets have better durability. Yeah, but they're slow. <laughs> this is bad if you got 189 strength. It depends on what you got for IAS, I guess. Yeah, I'm aware of it, Eric. I never made a video on it, but maybe I should make a video on it. Maybe I should. <laughs> Rosie said, where the flip is fair flare jungle. <laughs> oh, Rosie. Suffer. Suffering by moonlight. Flare jungle's not right. Evil Dolly's trying to kill my birthrights. It is the place called Flare Jungle. 
<laughs> Ugh, it's Great Marsh TZ. I told Why? you it's terrible. Why is it Great Marsh TZ? I don't like it. Cody, what are you running around for? I don't even got nothing. What do you want? Everything? You got fuds in your bowl? Did you eat your fuds? If I look over there, you got fuds in there? Or did you gobble it all up? Use the hungums? Use the hungums today? You need lots of fuds? So hungums? How hungums is it? Oh my god, I did the stupidest thing this morning. And I can't, I can't believe that it worked. So I was sitting there with Cody and I had like, uh, I had these better cheddars in my hand. And speaking of better cheddars, they changed the recipe on those things and they suck now. They absolutely are garbage. Don't buy better cheddars. If, if you if you once loved them at some point, like back in like the 90s or whatever, and you thought they were like the most amazing things ever, and then like you go to the store and you go buy another box because you're like, oh man, I love those, those are so good. When I was a kid, they're not good anymore. Okay, they're not. Don't buy them. Okay, don't. Just don't. We're feeding them to the dog. That's how bad they are. Uh, anyway, so I'm sitting there feeding them the better cheddars, and uh, <laughs> and you know I'm doing the the standard trick. You know I got the I got the you know Paul, give him Paul, and he knows Paul. He's very good at it. He's very very good at doing the Paul. Cody, you want to come show how you can do the Paul? Cody, you know how to do the Paul? Where you at, Cody? You gonna do the Paul? Give me a pow. Give me a pow. I need a pow. Give me a pow. Oh, that's a good paw. That's a good paw. So anyway, I was sitting there on the bed, and I was doing paw. And then uh, and it occurred to me, I was like, I wonder if he'll give me a foot. And I said foot, and he gave me a foot. He literally picked up his foot and put it in my hand. And I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> I was like, he knows the difference between a foot and a paw? And he did. He did it. It was a good, it was a good foot. And I, so I gave him a better chair. Every night, I, I treat him like a kid all the time. Like I'll tell him, I tell him silly things. I'm like, I'm like, I pick up his ear and I'm like, ear, and that does eyes, the balls, whiskums, nostrum hairs. And I must have done the same thing with his foot because he must know exactly what a foot is because I told him what a foot is. Cody. Do you? <laughs> he said, don't start unless you want to finish. Cody, do you want to go get me the alligator? Cody, go get me Mr. Alligator. Afternoon. How's the testing going, Brandon? We've been doing a lot of testing. I'm kind of like pooped out on testing. I think I spent like four hours testing. But uh, this is kind of what we came up to up with here. I mean, that's what we've got so far. I'm still trying to think of like additional things that I can test, so it's uh, it's a lot at the moment. We're I'm gonna compile it all together though. We'll, we'll figure it out eventually. Gotta give me a foot. Give me a foot. Give me a foot. I want not on the paw. Give me a foot. Give oh foot. man, come in this portal. You gotta see this. What you got in there? Come in this portal. Death, you probably see it. death. Death. See, I knew it was death. <laughs> I knew it was death. I knew. I knew all about the death you were providing. You know, heal it, Mala. Mala Chunks is being mean to me. He's being rude. All right, since Kubus wants to hide and he doesn't want to be in the camera, we're going to cover up his, his spots since he's being a poopy face. Kubus, why you got to be a poopy face? He's not a poopy face. 
He gets mad at me sometimes when I call him names. His name is Cody. You shouldn't call Cougars. him names. <laughs> so, well, well, he should be a better, better dog. How about that? He's a good boy. I call him Turd Face and 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 Turd Breath and all sorts of good names like that. Well, there, there ain't no telling what he caused you. Uh, probably some bad stuff. I've heard him say some pretty nasty things, actually. I mean, I don't I, know what I've language he's speaking, but I know it's. Yeah, I've, I've but I know him. a curse word when I hear a curse upset. word. <laughs> I know a curse word when I hear a curse word. He lets me know all about it. You want to TP to level one? Hmm? You want to TP to level one? Level one? Yeah, I'm just clearing the. Oh, I'm on level three. I'm on level three. One shot and people with my big axe. My honking space axe. Chopping monsters by daylight. Rezzing monsters by night time. I'm on a fart right on your cornflakes. That's just nasty. <laughs> can't run away from me. What would you recommend for leveling past level 94? Terror zones. Terror zones. Terror zones. Terror zone, terror zone, terror zone. But once you get to 94, the monsters are too low, and you get like no EXP, it's really gross. So you go you to terror eight zone, man chaos. and then you do ru ru Even 8 man chaos sucks. No, I mean, it, you can do it like by yourself. Oh, TZ's yeah, so are definitely faster, though. Even a bad TZ, honestly. Hold on, let me let me rephrase this in the form of a song for you, Brandon. Get in the zone, get in the zone, get in the terror zone. There you go. <laughs> I giggle at my own joke. This how you know that it's very funny. Because I giggle at my own joke and I laugh really good. And I know my joke is funny because I laugh at my own joke and it's <laughs> he is so funny. He is so funny. I watch it later and I laugh again. <laughs> I'm joking on myself, but I totally do laugh at my own jokes, so you know what? I don't even know. <laughs> I totally do laugh at that. I literally will watch my own videos sometimes just for like uh, Q and A, like uh, quality QC quality control. It's so, like I watch my own video and like double check my own work and stuff. And I'll literally get to some point where I make some dumb joke and I literally will laugh at my own dumb joke. And I, you know what? I don't know what to tell you. Okay, I laughed at my own joke. So, so sue me. Honestly, any progress is good progress. When it comes to like really high level farming, 
It's not a... It's not a sprint. It's a freaking marathon. You just gotta keep on plugging away at it. It's like making chainmail armor. And trust me, I've made chainmail armor. I know. Like, you can't look at the big picture. You can't look at the end result. You just gotta just... One, one link at a time. You just gotta put... One link in front of the other. And combine it in a European four and one. Four and one. And soon you'll be making chain mail. Chain mail. And then your friends will be going to jail. Going to jail. Summon Mancer to 99? It's not too bad. Yeah. A superior Cryptic Axe. It's not ethereal. It is one socket. Woo! Oh, buddy. So this is your Jalavazon. Your, your Jalandazon. I'm not Using the right notes. FCR ring, FCR ammo. You're just stupid D boy out here. Chop it, chop it, chop it, chop. Oh, crystal sword. too much today. I don't think I woke up at like frickin' 4 o'clock a.m. I didn't mean to wake up at 4 o'clock. It's just when I woke up. I got up at up, I don't know, 15 till 6. You <laughs> What are you coming over here for? Huffing and puffing. Like Stay Puff Marshmallow Man on that's getting heated up on a creme brulee. He said, what's a creme brulee? <laughs> he said, that sounds delicious. He said, I don't know all the words, but he said, I know that word sounds like food. And I like food. Totems. Where's your pillums? Can you give me a pillum? Three unique. Wow. The hunter's bow. That's a baby unique. That's the wither string. And then the pike, that's the baby unique. And the falchion, that's a baby unique. Mm. Bunch of baby uniques. Still three at once. It's Pretty nice. You wanna craft some hammies? I guess if you want. I got the materials. You got the uh, materials? I have a few. I need a better amulet than this. It has uh, to be 9 okay. FCR minimum. Okay, I'll make sure it's at least 8. Just to torture you. Torturing Chunky. So he has to torture. Gotta torture Chunky. He is the one we love to torture. Ah, ha ha ha. Good evening. Or I'll take a fire source and get one. Uh, 26 strength, 5% faster cast, nothing else good. Wah, 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 wah. Nope. 
need a jewelry jewelers. Taking it to the jewel bank. We're gonna do jewelry jewelers. I was just gonna grab one of mine. Mine and a man. Uh, rolled with all resistances and 9% faster cast and 43% poison rest, but no skilly 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 skills. No skilly skilly skillies. That's the last two rowls I've got. Oh, you poor rowless fool. You poor unfortunate fool. A shimmering jewel of the eye arm. Womp, 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 womp. Hey, not a bad roll. Plus two pally with 9% faster cast. Bone heart. Heart of bone. Many bony hearts hold. down. Come on down. Just hold that one in case anyone wants it down the road. Full of farts now. If you got a vex and a goal, you could roll a death. Last amulato, gelato. Oof. That's the big oof right there. The big oof. It's big oof. Fire skills. Come on down to my house. Big oof. We're gonna slap you in the mouth. Big oof. Your mama looks like a house. Big oof. <laughs> oh, did you see this thing I found? Look at this. Nice. It's only level 45 and it's got two sockets. It's actually really nice. It's you got life leech. Thing I found? It's got AR. Very nice. So 61. It's got lots of AR. 253. It's not bad. And then I found this Cryptic crazy sword. bow. Uh, they're about to walk a decline, it looks like. Oh, um, speaking of, I saved this for you. I know you like to roll Breath of the Dyings in a, uh, in a bow. It's a 15% Enhanced Crusader. Is that more damage than Hydra? I think they're the same, if I remember correctly. Let me pull it up real quick. I'm pretty sure they're like almost identical. Crusader is an average damage of 39. Hydra is an average damage of 39. They're the same damage. Um, they're the same speed. Uh, Crusader has a higher min of 15, and Hydra has a lower min of 10. So Hydra has a slightly higher maximum damage, and Crusader has a higher minimum damage. But they're basically the same. But it's a perfect 6 socket 15%. I don't, I don't come by those every day, so. Mm -mm. Oh, that might be worth rolling a few times. So well. Throw a, a, a Breath of the Dying in there for your Breath of the Dying boson. Yeah, that's on Dawn Ladder. Also got a good insight base if you want to not use an Act 2 Merc. I, I, perfect. Perfect, perfect blade what? bow. Dying.
Not to Amazon with 10 FCR. Oh, endurance of hate. It's kind of fun. We had somebody to teleport. Not at the highest. Zon is off the range. I do have a hundred FCR, so it's doable. Don't forget to repeat Mephisto three times for the true extra MF. Well, I thought you were supposed to just lick it. Oh, Diablo just invaded. Oh, okay. Well, here let's meet up on. Um, Where do you want to spawn him? We just meet up. I'm in Arcane right now. Let's just go in there and kill him in Arcane. I don't have my uh, crushing blow. Let me go grab my crushing blow crap real quick. You don't need it. I mean, I probably don't. But you no, you don't. I like having the okay. uh, I like having the life tap from the uh, op the open wounds he's, from the drag. He's not gonna last that long. It's, just, it's a two piece. It's a two piece swap. It's not that big of a deal. It's just a two piece. I told you he wouldn't last that long. I made it. I made it. <laughs> so what we got? 2020? Where's my 2020? 2020, 20, coming down, huh? 2020, 20, 20, coming down, yo, huh? Months. 11 attributes. I was using a 13 13, but Ooh. I found a 11 it's attribute not, 19 all res earlier. So. It's not really it's not really super amazing. I mean, it's eh, meh. It rolled uh, like middling, middling to low on all all stats. It's a uh, it's a 16 13 7. It's very middling. How can I help you? Mm. I'll keep my 11, 19, 10. You want it? No, I'll keep my 11, 19, 10. I need to resist. Um. That's why I was asking about the light resist charms. I'm using a large charm that is uh, 10 light resist because I haven't found any 11s to put there instead. Small ones. Or even 10 small ones. Nines, anyway. Manipulating seeds to get a perfect ante or torch. Mm -hmm. I mean, it would have been impossible in the old game. I think. Uh, right. I, think I think quite possibly impossible. Unfortunately, due to the crazy way that they spawned in the old game, and how you had to be in like a specific like IP patch or something. I can't even remember. It was like. It wasn't even just like a specific. Uh, I don't really know how to put it. There was there was something crazy about having to be within a specific chain of IP addresses that would have caused you to like re-roll the map like over and over and over again. That would have made it impossible, I think, to ever get a perfect roll on purpose. It would have to be completely on accident. Because you got to think about it. You would have to re-roll your game over and over and over again until you eventually got that specific seed. And there's no guarantee that that specific seed would be in the right IP address. It's a pretty decent little pair of gloves. Dual res. Uh, one of them is above 20%, which is nice. It has Mana Leech on it, and it has IAS. And they're Van Braces, which means they have pretty decent defense, too. They're actually not bad. We got Chaos Armor up here. And a Blue Falcon Mask. 
He didn't identify this blue Thunder Cougar Falcon mask. Thunder Cougar Ooh. Falcon mask. I didn't hit the rack either. You terrible fool. Ten Alvarez. Those gloves are pretty good. What's this button? Bow socks. Oh, those are runic talents. They also suck. Man, I got some crazy claws. I'll link them. And I'm, I guess they would work for... I don't know, I've got one dude offering on them, but we just can't meet up at the same time. Wow, what gloves are you wearing? What? Just left. Yeah, we're going to the number three. You might want these gloves, I don't know. They don't have plus skills. Uh, them, they're not, yeah, they're not Java gloves. I don't know. They do have lightning for the main stat and their resistance. And they have mana leech, which is kind of nice. I got some 220 decks, MF Java gloves. Ooh, I mean, other, is, but... other than the fact that those don't have skills, I think those, those gloves are better. I mean, Mana Leech and Lightning Res to, to cancel out your Sunder is pretty sweet. Look at that claw. You and your thirsty thirstes. Your thirstes is. is. Hmm. I guess maybe plus like four a wake Whirlwind. Of it's a plus yeah, four Wake of Fire. Of Maybe like a whirlwind assassin with also fire traps. Because it's got the bulls mod. I don't know. Oh, yeah. I found this stupid thing, and I, I, there was only one like as, a recipe that would even work in it, I think. It was like famine or something. I got a two socket one of those. I mean, it would certainly make a boss famine, but I don't know if I want to waste a ohm in a jaw rune. Did you find it yet? Mm. I'm gonna run around here and die. Right now. It's up. Okay, fine. Then I won't run around and die. You win. Oh, blue corona. Blue corona. I chopped him. I chopped him all. I chopped him he real good. I chopped him real good and I chopped him my chop. It's locked. They don't like how good I chop. They gave conviction. me bad review Yours on Yelp. Wasn't. Yours wasn't kicking in yet. A superior buckler. Wow. Poor guy. Didn't even stand a chance. Cody's gonna wear some pants. Cody, you want some pants? Get you some pants. Do you want cargo pants with lots of pockets? Or do you want something tight? You want tight leg pants? We'll get you some tight leg pants. Get you some capris, maybe? Little knee highs? You want some knee highs? What do you think of that? You want knee highs? I got one soul room. Cody, do you like pancakes? Do you like hot dogs? Do you like tacos? Did a ring fall in here? Do you, you like pizza crusts? 
He said, wait a minute. You said pizza and crust? I know all about some yes, crust. Yes, you did. Okay. He said, I know all about some crusts. You got a jewel? Junk jewel? Yeah, probably. Well, when am I hitting 99 with my paladin? What? I don't know if I want to do that. Uh, that's That just sounds like a whole lot of work, and I don't know if I got enough patience for that. Dang it, Cody. Here, let me drop roll, my jewel on the ground. Roll this ring. Or craft this ring. It craft dropped in that. Uh, ring. It dropped in that terrace Why are you grumbling at me? Grumble boy. Why you gotta grumble at me? Do you gotta go freaking pee? Why you gotta grumble? Why you gotta grumble? Why you gotta grumble at me? I'm gonna get you a, a tattoo on your belly that says X404. Like on the Fallout show. <laughs> Man, they were ruthless on the Fallout show when they when they showed uh, Dog Meat's backstory or X four hundred four's backstory or whatever. They uh, they flashed to this like science scientific facility where apparently they were doing like research on dogs, and uh, apparently they were weighing the baby dogs, the the puppies, like from when they were born, and if the puppies didn't weigh up to a certain weight. They would, uh, they would take the puppy yep. and throw it in the incinerator. That was pretty brutal. Anyway, one of the scientists was weighing the puppies, and apparently one of the puppies didn't make the cut. And instead of, uh, instead of throwing the puppy, chucking the puppy in the incinerator, he, uh, he decided to, uh, to raise it as his own puppy. And, uh... That was against the uh, the rules of the facility, and so when they caught him, they tried to kill him for for not throwing the puppy in the incinerator. It's pretty brutal. And thus, dog meat was born. What's up, my Peffy Peffy? He dropped a speculum. <laughs> he exploded. Yep, once you get that conviction on there, it don't it don't take long. He said bye. Bye, you see the roll I got on my infinity. Oh, what'd you get? Something real good? I mean, I'd say it's pretty good. I. Wow. Um, Three off on ED, one off on. Resist. That's new. That's <laughs> that's new. Yeah. No. Like no. I, I've never rolled one that good. Look I in, don't think. Look in Discord. Huh. <laughs> That's, uh, okay, well, it's, uh, <laughs> it's 322 enhanced damage. That jank told negative, me no. And negative 54 enemy light res. 75 to 890 damage. That's weird. I jank said, I never yeah, seen that it, before. It, it did say no. Cody. I wonder if it's because it was on my bird. Give me this tail. Give me this tail. I'm going to tell him bite it. Give me this tail. Why's it got a little twist at the end? Why's it got a tail got a twist? Does it look the same now? No, oh, yep. Yeah. Socket item on a, on info unavailable in link. I, I took it off of him and put it in my inventory. And I have no idea. That's strange. What are unidentified infinities going for these days? Unid 
unaid uh, they what? don't <laughs> they don't exist well i mean you could it could come put the, the last room. rune in and do it that way yeah i don't know what is the last rune on infinity ist ist i guess that's one way to do it yeah Burr, 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 burr if sell them that's right burr mal burr if let's go burr mal burr that down burr mal burr if burr mal burr burr jaw burr burr jaw Storm slime the hungry. I chop you in the face with my big old giant mother freaking mace. No, I got a no, I got a mace. I got a I got an axe. A Qatar. Chomp, 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 chomp. Chomp, 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 chomp. Chop, 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 chop. Oh, did you ever get your, uh. Did you ever get your Leap Barbarian all the way set up? Yeah, I mean, he's full of charms. Bone Wand of Enchantment. It didn't enchant me. I could stop yawning. It's been such a busy week for me. This this week. God bless it. I can't. I haven't been streaming very much, but that's really just because I haven't had the time. Either that or just like there were other things that were coming up that were more important. And, and then I like freaking by the time I got to the streaming part, I was like dead tired. Can I go to work tomorrow too? I don't want to go. My grandma was sick there for a couple weeks. That kind of put a stop to everything for me. She feeling better? Yeah, yeah, she's doing better. We got uh, physical therapy coming by for her now and home health coming in a couple days. Hmm. Kind of helps me out. Most important thing, and this is something I've learned from time, is routine. A lot of people uh, really misunderstand a routine. Older Don't people, that gym shrine. older people stay alive by routine. That's how they stay alive. Like they they literally have a routine that they do every single day, and that routine literally keeps them alive. Well, she... If you can get her back into a routine, like some kind of routine, I don't know what, but if you can get her back into a routine, she'll do fine. Well, I mean, she got shingles, and that really is what kind of knocked her. Oh, I know, and that'll break you out of your routine and get you all messed up and discombobulated. Discombobulated. That's an official medical term, by the way. Oh, 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 thief. I killed that monster face. 76 cold. Boobies. Not boobies. Your mom's a 76 cold. Uber. I 
That's a terrible ring. It's a terrible charm. I'm sad I stole it from you. <laughs> That's a belt. Check that. Check the vortex a little. Chance stick. Well, it got the two socket. Wah, 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 wah. You it's like a Yeah, I need some better stop yawning. Inside of Bale's, uh, I mean, uh, Mephisto's throne room, there's always that, like, one chest that, like, floats around. It's always in a weird spot. Never, never in the same spot. I just gotta look for it, because it's always had. Like, sometimes it'll be right down here by the portal, and then other times it'll be, like, up here near Mephisto, and sometimes it'll be, like, on the edge of one of the rivers, or blood, the blood rivers. About to go get me some food. Food? Yeah. I'll give you one more telly down there and then I'm gonna go get me something to eat. Mom I'm gonna go take a nap. I sleep. Pieces. Time you gotta go to work? Uh, morning. Oh. I was thinking about playing some Final Fantasy 7. Uh, did you finally buy it? No, not yet. I haven't pulled the trigger yet, but I wanted to do some magic fine testing first. That's why I did this. Maybe we'll do some. I wish you got it when tomorrow. it was on sale. Yeah, I should have, but I didn't. So. And it's like thirty dollars cheaper then. I know. Well. Our rebirth isn't on PC anyway, so. No, it's not yet. The remake is. It'll probably be a while before they put it in. Ooh, brown stacks. Basket, 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 basket. Die, Brim. Oh, nice. Bring in a jacket star. That's got to be the best level 15 belt I've ever seen. Look at this level 15 belt. It's godlike. I don't think I've seen a better level 15 <laughs> belt in my Lord. life. It's level 15. It's got 24% faster hit recovery. It's got two resistances. It's got 26 life on it. And it's got extra gold for monsters. Like the best level 15 belt I've ever seen. That's the kind of thing you save for a new character day and you throw it on the ground and literally somebody's just like, uh, <laughs> what is this? I don't know, it's got that faster hair to cover it. It might be a good, like, trap barb. I mean, it can be upgraded to a, uh, yeah, to a, a, a decent belt as time. well, so. Death mash, reinforced mace. Oh, the uh, reinforced mace is ethereal. Aw, oh, I didn't roll any ED. That's sad. I did roll attack rating and it rolled. Oh, it rolled knockback too. Ugh. That's a terrible. It's terrible. That's teased. They teased me with that ethereal and then they, then they gave me garbage. Why did he drop us three piles of gold? That's. that's... Sees a butthole. It's not nice.
It's not nice. Alright, bud, I'm gonna get something to eat. Okay. I saw you in boys, so I figured I'd jump in. I hadn't been able to get in here with you in a while. Ever dabble on PD2? I'm honestly, I'm not really a big fan of PD2. I do love me some Diablo 2, though. We'll catch you later, buddy. All right, have fun, Chunks. Cody. Give me a hook. Come here. Why well, you got this lazy foot? What's this foot right here? It's lazy. That's a lazy foot right there. With the web toes. Why you got web and toes? Web toes. Let me see them. Let me see them toes. Web toes in there. <laughs> I, the web the web toe thing always throws me for a loop with him. Apparently, web toes is a that's something that only comes from very few breeds. If you search for web toes in dog breeds, it literally only comes with a, up with a couple breeds: it's Labrador Retriever, Newfoundland. Portuguese Water Dog, Otter Hound, Irish Water Spaniel, Poodle, and Red Bone Coon Hound. Apparently, these are the only breeds that have webbed toes. And, uh, he has webbed toes. So, uh, he's got to be mixed with one of these. Probably Labrador Retriever is what I would assume. Because uh, he does kind of look a little bit like a lab in the face. Little, little webbed toes. Get them little web toes like this. Let's see. See, normal paws, you got like a space in between the toe. The webbed paws, they got like, there's like a, uh, when you like pull the toes apart, there's like a skin in between the toes. Because they're, cause they're webbed. They get the webbed toes. The webbedy webs. Webbedy webbedy webs. Webbedy webbedy webbedies. They look like that. They're kind of creepy looking, to be honest. Little, little spread them out, and they got like little, they got little, like little frog feet or something. Like little. That's right. I'm talking about you, Cody. Frog feet, dinosaur, monster dog, dog monster, monster dog monster. Oh yeah, I miss my my mercenary. My mercenary. Boom, 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 boom. Somebody said my uh, hero editor link didn't work anymore. I, well, I really doubt that. Checked it real quick. Seems to be working just fine, but. Chopping monsters by daylight. Sleeping with a monster dog by moonlight. And he snores, it's a real fright. He is the one cobish mustard. Oh.
All right, guys and gals, I gotta get to work early tomorrow, so I think I'm gonna call it a little bit early. Plus, I gotta mull over all this data, and I gotta really kind of like figure out what this all means. I feel like once I think about it for a little while, and I start to come up with potential, like future testing possibilities, I might figure out some more stuff. But uh, as it is right now, I'm kind of stuck on what to test from this point. I also uh, know there's some ways that I can test some other things, but I feel like it's going to be really boring with basically me just clicking on the same thing about 10 trillion times, trying to figure out a pattern, and uh, I don't really want to bore you guys with that. That's going to be something I maybe do offline. Anyway, as always, I do appreciate you guys and gals joining me for these fun little adventures, especially when we're diving into the depths of the secrets of Diablo 2. And as always, if you enjoy my content, be sure to hit the like button. And as always, keep watching.